Good evening. This week, we lost a legend in Greenfield Athletics. Um, I'd like to take a moment of silence in remembrance of Donna Woodcock, who was a coach, teacher, principal, vice principal, and athletic director. At this time, I'd like to do a moment of silence in remembrance of all the good things that Donna did in the athletic world. Thank you. Thank you. And that was the voice of uh, Greenfield High School Athletic Director, Mike Kaczewski. Of course, he uh, fills the job that Donna Woodcock held for several years, but she filled many roles here at Greenfield High School and um, you know, social media. You know, at its worst, it's one of the world's biggest cesspools, Bobby, but at its best, I read a lot of great um, expressions of love and respect and admiration, sadness over the passing of Donna Woodcock, and that's what I guess social media can do. You know, you can't, you can't, you can feel close to people at that point. Yes, you can. And you know, what was nice is seeing all those former players that were able to post all those pictures, Jeff, that you were able to see. And I was lucky enough to have a lot of Donna's players that are my Facebook friends. So I was personally blessed to be able to have seen a lot of those. And some of the words and some of the kindness was unbelievable by the people in this community, for sure. And it wasn't just Greenfield, Jeff. Yeah. It was everyone that was involved in this community, whether they had some kind of a coaching relationship or maybe that they had her as a coach for maybe a summer program or whatever the bottom line is is that donna touched many people's lives greenfield has taken the field they're going through the uh, warm-up tosses uh, on the mound of course is caleb thomas and he's bringing him in there to michael pierce greenfield defensively in the outfield it's uh, jackson campbell out in left field ordinarily an infielder but he's in left field tonight john marhefka usually in left he's in center tonight and you have uh, Rodriguez in right, Cyano at third, Devin Duby at shortstop, Fitzpatrick at second base, Malik Moore at first, and again Pierce is catching Caleb Thomas. Frontier here in the first inning, Alex Kaczynski the shortstop, Nico Fasulo the center fielder, and Grayson Luce the second baseman, one, two, three, to lead off here against Caleb Thomas. Seven inning ball game here. Uh, the sun is back out again about 45 minutes before the start of the game. It got very dark here. It got very windy here. It did. I thought we were going to get a worse storm, Jeff, to yeah. be honest. And briefly, very rainy here. Yeah. The only good thing is, is it's taken away all that dryness of the field. It sort of wet it down just enough, Jeff. Just that it should be just perfect here tonight. And right now, we've got beautiful blue skies. And uh, the sun is out, and we're ready for some baseball. All righty. Alex Kuczynski, the Frontier shortstop, wears number 11. He's a right-handed batter going up against the right-handed pitching, Caleb Thomas. We're set to go. We're almost set to go. Skinny Williams has to get into the third base coach's box. And now we're ready to go. Thomas, the right-hander, rocks and fires. First pitch swinging and hit in the left field. And just in front of Jackson Campbell came in. Could not make a play on it, so one pitch, and Frontier gets the leadoff man on. Yep, that was a, a little leaguer right there that just was able to get past the infield, and Campbell couldn't get it the way he was positioned there in left field. So Gachinski on first with nobody out. Here is Nico Fasulo. He's the center fielder, wears number one, and he's a center fielder for a reason, Bobby. He's a very quick player. We saw that during the basketball season. Sure is. I mean, that kid's got lightning speed. Thomas will work out of the stretch. Check Skuczynski. First ball three and ground ball foul down the first baseline. Love there by Moore, but Skuczynski will have to come back to first base. Grayson Loose, the second baseman, is on deck. A couple of really good umpires here tonight. We got Mr. Cunha and we got Mr. Guerin tonight. DJ Guerin calling balls and strike. And Cunha on the bases. But they call the ball. On Thomas, Ooh. and that was a, a speak of umpire Pena. He made the call and down into scoring position. Now with nobody, uh, with nobody out is Kuczynski. Tell you right now, that's a big, that's a big opportunity here for Frontier to get that first blood. It's only a one nothing game, 
in their last contest earlier this year, Jeff. Thomas sets, looks towards second. Shortstop Doobie sneaking in, now he'll go back into the hole. A secondary lead there by Kuczynski, pitches foul back and out of play. And the count is 0-2. Well, good spot right here for Thomas. The only thing is you don't want to throw anything in the dirt because otherwise that runner could go to third. So now you got to make a clean pitch here. And maybe you can get this guy and get this Ulo out on strikes. Thomas with a high set. Looks towards second. Looks towards second again. Turns and fires plate word. That's a fastball high. Count goes to one and two. Top one here at Vetsville. We're just underway. Frontier and Greenfield. Early start here on the Friday night. The set in the one two. Thomas pirouettes on the mound, takes one step towards second base, does not throw over there. I don't think that uh, Skinny Williams is going to take any chances with no outs and a runner on second base on him trying to go to third, especially with the arm of Michael Pierce. One two pitch went to the curveball. It did not break. It stayed up top. And the count now even at two and two. Mostly holding Gachinski at second base is the Greenfield second baseman Fitzpatrick. Doobie Nelson, a quick toss over there. Gachinski though gets back in. He had to dive, however, to make it back safely. Count remains two and two. Field of Thomas Back on the rubber. Frontier bench trying to get to him. Here's the pitch. In there, called strike three. First strikeout of the night. There's one out here in the first. Yeah, that was a nice curveball right there, Jeff, to be able to get the Hulo. So one down here with a runner on second for Frontier. Second baseman Grayson Luce will now bat. He's a left-handed batter. And he stands pretty close to the plate and pretty high up in the box. Yeah, and the good thing is if he can keep it on the right side of the field, that works out very well for Kuczynski to be able to get the third easily. First pitch to Grayson Lou swings, sends it in the air down the left field line, and the shortstop Doobie comes over in foul territory to put it away. And Luce is retired on one pitch. And now with two outs and Kuczynski on second, here comes the cleanup batter. Tyler Cusson, the first baseman. Cusson's got a big frame. Big frame. And he's a strong young man. <laughs> you could just tell by just looking at his body frame. Very, very compact. Quick shot at second base as the second baseman Fitzpatrick snuck in, but again, Gachinski got back in safely. Two outs now, run around second. Gachinski let off with a single, advanced to second on a block, and he's been there ever since. Here's the first pitch to Cussing. Curveball in there for a strike. It's 0 1. Tell you right now, that curveball has been definitely the go to for Caleb Thomas this year. And every time that it's on, boy, it looks really sweet going over the plate. Next pitch. That's in there for a strike. So yeah. quickly 0 and 2. He's now one pitch away from getting out of this mini jam. I wonder if there'll be a hit and run here with two strikes on whether Gachinski will be going. Here's the pitch, goes to the fastball, rolling away. And then the count now goes to one and two. Top of the first here. Front here with a runner in scoring position, but they uh, haven't scored yet. Thomas gets the sign from Pierce. Setting up high, and now uh, the left throw to second base. Back in there, Duchinsky. And now Pierce will go to the mound. And uh, now that I see Coach Skinny Williams coming down to the plate, I'm wondering if he might try to call a hit and run here and take that chance. Well, you would do it with two outs, as you, as you mentioned earlier in this half inning. And there was nobody out or even one out. We knew that they weren't going to send Gachinski. No. Too risky. You don't want to run yourself out of a promising inning. And if you notice, he's taking a bigger lead, too, now here, Jeff. The one-two pitch. Fastball rolling away, and the count now even at two and two. And the 
Caleb Thomas. Gets the sign for Pierce, looks out at second, looks to the plate, turns, throws, curveball, hit on the ground down the shortstop. It gets through Doobie. That is going to score the first run of the night. As Gachinski scores on the infield air, one nothing Red Hawks. I mean, Doobie, I don't think he even got his glove down on the ground. And right under, yep, right through the wickets. So the Red Hawks pick up a uh, first run of the night with two outs and two strikes. Bryant now, step in, right-handed batter, another big strong kid. First, uh, a throw over first base, Malik Moore grabs it back easily though, it's Cussin. Right-handed batter is Bryant, he's the DH, he's hitting for the catcher, Caden James. Here is the pitch. In there for a straight quick throw down the first base. Did they get him? Ooh. Very close. Cussin almost got caught. Boy, what a nice throw on his knees from the catcher of Greenfield, Michael Pierce. He almost got him. Boy, that was close, Jeff. The 0 1. Here it is. Foul back over the screen, out of play. Heading over towards Davis Street, over towards the uh, batting cage, actually. And quickly, 0-2 now with two outs. No balls, two strikes, two outs, runner on first, frontier one. Didn't feel enough for him. Throw over to first base. Going back in easily is Cussin. Really not taking much of a lead. I'm really surprised they're even taking a chance of throwing it over. Jeff over to first base. Yeah, a lot of bad things can happen. Yeah, exactly, especially the pass ball. The pitch, fastball hit in the air towards right field and coming towards the line and making the catch is Rodriguez to retire the side. But Frontier scores with two outs. We go to the last half of the first inning. And on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard, it's Frontier 1. Greenfield coming up on Deer Country 95.3. Greenfield coming to bat in the last half of the first inning. Frontier leading one to nothing. Greenfield's batting order, Devin Doobie, the shortstop at leadoff. Jackson Campbell playing left tonight. He bats second. John Marhefka is the center fielder batting third. Hitting cleanup, the catcher Michael Pierce. Caleb Thomas is pitching and hitting fifth. Batting sixth, the first baseman Malik Moore. Lucas Siano is playing third, hitting seventh. Batting eighth, the second baseman Arthur Fitzpatrick. And Batty Knight playing right field, Arnaldo Rodriguez, who just put that last fly ball away to end the first inning. Going up against Frontier starting pitcher Wyatt Eads. He's a right hander. And uh, he's got decent speed, I would say. Outfield for Frontier, left to right, Ferreira in left, Basulo in center, and Pareda in right. At third base, Skabiski Banik. Kuczynski is at short, loose. At second base, Cussin, the first baseman, James, it's catching ease. All right, here's Devin Doobie looking to atone for the missed grounder, which uh, resulted in that frontier run. Very fast player. Contact hit a right handed batter. And the first pitch from Leeds, a fastball grounded up the middle into center field for a base hit. Ah, nice job right there by Devin Doobie to get that leadoff hit for Greenfield. It's almost like exactly what happened in that first inning where Frontier had their leadoff guy, but they were able to play him. We'll have to see if Greenfield will be able to do that with Doobie here in the bottom of the first. Here comes Jackson Campbell now playing left field, or nearly the shortstop. Right-handed batter, where's number one? Doobie takes his leadoff first. Being held there by Cussin. Frontier one, Greenfield nothing, bottom one. Set by Eads, throws over the first base. Doobie dives back to the bag, gets it easily. Wouldn't surprise me if he'd take off on that first pitch. I mean, he's that quick. Eads sets, comes to the belt. Throws over the first base again. Again, we've mentioned it in earlier baseball broadcasts. If this was Major League Baseball, that's it. Yep. Two disengagements, and now you have to throw to the plate, which huge advantage for the base runner. Off on the pitch. 
goes Doobie. It's a wild pitch. Doobie will round. He's going to head to third. The throw comes in late. And wow. Way in. <laughs> Talk about a guy who's got speed, Jeff. Wild pitch and ends up on third base on Greenfield with a tying run on third with nobody out. I would have just hit second now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. Uh, I want to apologize for a couple of the breaks of the voice here. The uh, the pollen has really uh, taken a toll on my throat with the burning of the pollen in my... Also, just been a little bit of a tough allergy season, Jeff, so far. Next pitch to Campbell. He squares to Vaughn, and they got to play the play. No, unable to field it with Eads. And then there's a collision at first between Campbell and Cusson. All good. Greenfield scores the run on the suicide squeeze bunt. It looked for a moment like they had a, a chance at a play there, Bobby. You know, that was really great. And I'm going to tell you something. That is not normally Tom Schusen at baseball. He does not do a lot of small ball. That was a big play right there for Greenfield. And there you go. Now you got that runner on first. And you got that runner home. And Greenfield's in a very good spot here with no outs in the bottom of the first. Tied now at one. Eads sets. Let's it fly. That pitcher is away. One and oh. This is... John Marhefka, the center fielder, and Mr. Trouble, Michael Pierce, is on deck. <laughs> you got that right. And if you're Frontier, you want him batting with either nobody on or only one runner on. That pitches away 2-0. Oh. You know, I wonder if uh, what's happened here is that Eads is uh, worrying too much more about the runners on plate instead of worrying about the batter at the, I mean, at the plate here instead of the runners on base. He said he's going to settle himself in. See? Throws over. It gets away from the first baseman, Cussin, but not very far. Campbell uh, did not even consider picking up for a second. He likely would have been tossed out. Two balls, no strikes. Still nobody out. Frontier one, Greenfield one here in the bottom of the first. Campbell takes his lead off first base. Here's the pitch. That's in there for a strike. Two balls and one strike to Marhefka. Big spot here for Johnny Marhefka. And there's a nice gap in between center field and right field. Yep, coming up towards the softball diamond. There goes Campbell, and he's going to get a clean steal. Got that off the pitcher. Oh, yeah. He a huge jump. He did a great job on that. Uh, Campbell reached on that sacrifice, and now he's in scoring position with nobody out. Greenfield looking to take the lead here, put up a crooked number. Well, he's got that runner in scoring position here, Marhefka. Two strikes on him. Here's the pitch. Late swing, follow back to the screen. Now the count even at two and two. Leads and Frontier, they need an out here. Get control of this inning back. Starting to get a good crowd here at Vetchfield. A lot of folks around the outside of where we are. The 2-2 pitch. And that's it on the ground down towards shortstop. Gets through the shortstop. That'll go for an error on the shortstop. And Campbell couldn't move up. The play was right in front of him. Exactly. There was that that was a very smart base move right there by Campbell not to try because otherwise they could have if he fielded it cleanly threw him out of third and Michael Pierce now comes up with two on and nobody out here in the first and again Frontier needs an out they want to get control of this inning back it's going all Greenfields away right now here's the set Campbell dancing way off the bat oh yeah and he's getting in the head of Eads. Stepped right off the mound on that play there, Jeff. Eads asking his catcher James to go through the signs again. Now he'll throw and throws it in the center field. And that's going to send Campbell to third base. And coming up to second base is Marietta. Now runners on second and third with nobody out. Yeah, there's a situation where the pitcher is starting to get away from his game plan of being able to throw the ball to the plate. Now Skinny Williams is coming out, and I imagine he's going to say, listen, we got to concentrate on the batter. We can't be worrying about throwing the ball to the different bases on these guys that are leading. Well, particularly now, since the runners are on second and third, 
now you really can focus on the batter. You might even want to work out of the windup potentially here, if that's what you're more comfortable doing. I agree. And I also agree that that brings up a big opportunity for Michael Pierce too, because now he's got two guys in scoring position and with the power that he has in the year that he has had as a hitter, he surely has been the top dog when it comes to the best hits for Greenfield this season is the catcher right up now. Frontier will bring the infield in on the grass all the way around. And the pitch to Pierce, that it's, uh, goes all the way, a wild pitch to the screen. Campbell scores from third, 2-1 Greenfield. Wow. Very unfortunate here. Eads is really struggling here in the first inning. Moving up to third is Marhefka. He's never really given himself a chance to be able to see what he can do with the batters because he's been working around all the other things that have been happening around him, Jeff. Greenfield two, Frontier one, bottom one, still nobody out. Pierce waits, rips it. Foul down the third base line. He was right on that. Sure was. Right on the screws right there, buddy. Yeah, and that's what he does. He's got a nice swing as well. Very nice swing, Jeff. Going to a crowd, shouting and encouragement to Eads, hoping we can get him out here, keep this inning from blowing up here. Here's the windup. And the pitch to Pierce. That is inside for a ball. Two balls and one stroke. Here's a very, uh, very tall young man. Here's the next pitch. In the air, into left field, into the sun. And this is going to drop for a single. Mahefka had to hold up. But now he will score easily. RBI single by Michael Pierce. Greenfield now leads 3-1. Wow, really nice job right there by Pierce to be patient at the plate. He was able to get that base hit. No way, even with the speed of Miles Fierra out there in left field, he wasn't going to be able to get to that one either. And he was squinting into the sun. This time of day, the sun field is left field. Here at Betts Field. There's a first pitch to Caleb Thomas. Gets through James, the catcher. And Pierce now will move up to second base. Here comes Kitty Williams, and uh, we're going to see a new pitcher here. Yep, we are. Looks like Moose will be coming in. And that is true, so let's see what they're going to do here. Yeah. Uh, we'll sort this out. Um, uh, where are they going to go? Who, who's going to come? Uh, Grayson Moose just went in to grab himself a oh, new... Uh, a new goal. Yeah. yeah. So Moose will be the new pitcher going out to right field now. Uh, for Frontier will be Eads. But I don't know who's going a second. And is it is Pareda? Going to move. Oh, he might go to from right field to uh, second. Yeah, we'll see where fifteen ends up. But yep, number nine, Grayson Loose, left-hander, will be uh, the new pitcher for the Frontier Red Hawks. So while he takes his warm-up tosses here, we'll take a quick thirty-second timeout. We're playing the last half of the first inning. It's been a three-run inning for Greenfield so far. 3-1 Greenfield over Frontier on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. We're back in 30 seconds. Keep the going. Keep it going. All right, Pierce now came to the bench during the uh, stoppage of play. He'll go back to second base. Loose on the mound. Left-handed pitcher is going to pitch to Caleb Thomas. He picks it up with a one -on count. Uh, Loose is a right-handed uh, pitcher, I should say. Okay. Let's it fly. Fastball followed back, so he's off to a good start. And the count now goes to one and one. Greenfield three, Frontier one, bottom one. Very long first inning. We've uh, a little bit late starting. We started at 7.05, so it's been almost half an hour of an inning. Here's the set by loose to pitch fastball. A little high to Thomas. Two balls and one strike. And 
Next pitch. Got there. Story. Nice job uh, framing the play by the catcher, James. Yeah, he did do a great job framing that. That was perfect. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out. One on second. Greenfield three, Frontier one. The set now, the bluff the throw to second base boy. Between, between actual throws and bluffs, we've seen a lot of that tonight. Sure have. It's just happening alone. The set. Looks back a second time, turns, fires to the plate, in the dirt. Nice scoop there by James. Pierce thought about hitting the third, but oh, there was nobody out. No, no need to run into an out. I'll tell you right now, this is a big spot here. You got to try to get that out that they really need. No outs in this game so far for Greenfield. There's the set. Ground ball down the third base line, and the third baseman... Skibiski Bennett comes in, gloves it in foul territory, so it wouldn't roll back there. Now here at Vets Field, the Bates pass uh, up the first and third base lines, it's grass. You have dirt at home plate and dirt in the infield between first and third, but on the base lines between home and third and between third and home, it's, it's grass. So not a good opportunity for a ball to roll back there anyway. Three balls, two strikes. Nobody out. Here's the pitch to Thomas. Down the line and right, and it just goes foul. And we'll do it again, three and two. I'll tell you right now, if that ended up falling in, that was an easy run. That would have been an easy RBI for Thomas if that fell. Yep, Pierce would have cruised home with the fourth run of the inning. Instead, we do it again. Caleb Thomas back in the right-handed batter's box. Pierce, the big lead. There's the pitch, curveball, called, strike three, and there it is. At last, the first out recorded here in the last of the first. Well, nice job right there by Luce to be able to get that curveball to break just at the last minute and sort of had Thomas sitting there staring at the ball being called strike three looking. Malik Moore, first baseman, right-handed batter. And a block throw to second base. Pierce dies back in. Greenfield three, Frontier one. One out here, bottom of the first inning. Pierce on second, Moore at the dish. Swinging, follows it towards the, towards the uh, tennis courts down there on the right field line. It's 0-1. Big lead by Pierce, and they'll try to bluff him back. It's a game of cat and mouse right now. Well, it's exactly what happened in that first inning where Eads was really struggling because of the runners on base. Her ball, little bit up and in. And the cat now goes to one and one. Loose, looks in at the catcher, James. Fastball, blew right by him. Count goes to one and two. Well, Loose is uh, definitely turning the tide here now since he came in. Recording him out, now he's up one and two. Curveball, swung and a missed right three. Gets away from the catcher. They'll throw down the first, record the out there. But moving up to third on the play is Pierce. Two outs with a runner on third. Well, Lucas Ayano, the young freshman here on Greenfield's pretty young team, is up with a guy in scoring position with an opportunity to be able to put Greenfield up 4-1. to one. Lucas Sayano wears number 10. He is the Greenfield uh, third baseman. If he can keep the inning going, we'll see Arthur Fitzpatrick. Greenfield 3, Frontier 1. Uh, looking towards the Greenfield dugout to get the sign. And at the beginning of the inning, they bunted Devin Doobie home. Uh, Jackson Campbell. Here's the pitch curveball. And there for a strike, it's 0 1. Good assortment of curves and fast pitches so far by Luce. Now 
The 0-1 pitch goes to the curve again. This one stays inside. The count now even at 1-1. One and one. Frenchie will have the six, seven, and eight batters coming up in the second. That pitch gets away from the catcher with a fastball, and the fourth run of the inning will score Pierce. Scores easily, 4-1 Greenway. Boy, Greenfield's off to a really good start here, Jeff. A lot of pass balls, a lot of uh, really focused opportunities that have really hurt in Frontier with the pitching staff here in this first inning. The first four batters reached, and they all scored. Now, Luce, if he wants, can work out of a full windup, but he'll still work out of the stretch. Fastball foul back to the screen. Two balls, two strikes with two outs. Frontier scored one in the top of the first. Green Wave comes back with a four spot so far here in the first. Luce turns and fires. Fastball in the dirt. No runners on base now, but Jim Stillman is coming out. Even though you didn't really need to have to at that point. So now back in on the right-hander's box. Stands pretty close to the plate, actually. An inside fastball would probably be uh, tough to deal with. Goes to the curve, he waved at it. And he is out. So, ends up striking out the side when he came in, but Greenfield scores four. We go to the top of the second inning, and on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard, it's Greenfield four, Frontier one, Bear Country Duddy, 5.3. The first inning between Frontier's half, where they scored a run, and Greenfield's half, when they scored four times, Took 29 minutes, so we're on pace to have a very late night. But I've been at games where either the first part of the game zips by, and you're thinking, wow, this game's going to be over in about an hour and a half, and then suddenly gets uh, slugged down. Or maybe tonight, off to kind of a sluggish start, and maybe things will be a little crisper as we go along here. Yeah, especially with the way that that first inning went for Frontier, I think that one of the biggest problems with the starting pitcher is that I think he was getting a little too flustered about the runners that were on base, Jeff, and concentrated a little bit more on those than concentrating on the plate. All right, the Red Hawks will come up here now in the top half of the second inning. Six, seven, and eight batters in the lineup. Liam Skibiski, Bannock, playing third base. He'll lead off, and then it will be Eads, who's now playing right field, and then Miles Ferrer, the left fielder. All right, Liam steps in on the right side against Caleb Thomas, who has a three-run lead now. First pitch, curveball, skied into shallow right. This could be trouble, and it is going to drop. Malik Moore just stretched out. Laid out, trying to come up with it, unable to do so. Wasn't the hardest hit ball, but Liam's on first base. Well, hey, good hustle down the line. Two for a big guy. Nice job right there by Skabiski Bannock. So he leads things off here in the second inning. This is the second inning in a row that Frontier was be able to start the inning with a runner on first. Wyatt Eads now batting. Began the game on the mound, now playing right field. First pitch to him. In there for a called strike, it's 0-1. No balls, one strike. Skabiski Bennett on first. Here is the set by Thomas, the pitch. And that's going to be a line shot past the second baseman in the right field for a single. Skabiski Bennett will stop at second base. First and second, nobody out here. Come the Red Hawks right back. Yeah, nice job being able to get things cooking here in the second inning. Especially the nice job after being down by three, being able to get the first two runners on base here in the second. Back-to-back -back singles by Skabiski, Bannock, and Eads. Miles Ferrer, the left fielder, right-handed batter now. Now they're going to throw down the second base. Ends up uh, almost in center field, but didn't get away far enough. Shortstop Doobie came over to pick up that loose throw. 
But boy, I tell you, these uh, these pitchers on both sides are playing with fire. They are. Trying to get these pickoffs. So. Yeah, and, and boy, it really hasn't worked out for both both of the pitchers that started this game. Fastball, that is outside for a ball. 1-0 to count to Ferrara. On deck is Brady Parada. That pitch in there for a strike. It's one and one. And actually, it looks like Parada's out of the game. He was in right field. Okay. They, um, I'll get this player. Oh, that's Jesse Dubria. Okay. So Jesse's going to be batting next when they made the pitching switch. And he's playing second base right now. You know, Jesse is kicking a, kicking some field goals, right? Over the frontier during football. And hooping it up in the uh, winter. Yes, he did. Next pitch, curveball. Got the strike call. One and one. Runners on second and third now. Nobody out. Top two, 4 1 Greenfield. The pitch. Swung on and missed, right too. Wade got it, got, got fooled, obviously. Yeah, that curveball that dipped in late, Jeff. One of those late dips. I'll tell you, that's one of the pitches that's really tough for hitters by Thomas when he throws that right. Another curveball hit in the air into right field. Lining up is Rodriguez, makes the catch. Here comes the play at the plate. And it's thrown away. This might score another run. It will score two runs on a sacrifice fly. A sacrifice fly and an error. Two runs score. And it's now four to three. Boy, that was just... I don't understand why they threw the ball on that play, Jeff. That literally cost them a run. Greenfield. Sure did. Skabiski, Bannock, and Eads both score. And now Jesse Dubriel. The second baseman steps in on the right side. We feel four, Frontier three. We're going to have a football score here tonight, Bobby. <laughs> I think we are. And a pitch over the head of Gabriel. Nobody left on base, so it's just one and oh. Curveball that, I guess it was a curve they didn't break. Or a fastball that just got away, but went right over Jesse's head. One ball, no strikes. One out in the inning. Here's the pitch from Thomas. Fastball that's outside. Two and over count. Both teams off to a slow start tonight. They are scuffling with some of the, mostly with the throws, but we've had missed grounders. Missed throws. Wild pitches. Yep, yeah, we've seen it all, haven't we, Jeff? Yeah. <laughs> and just, and, and, and only an inning and a half, we've seen what most games we see in seven. Or more innings. Or more. That's very true. Yeah, we've, we, we've seen a lot. That was a ground ball uh, down towards first base foul. Count goes to two and one to Dubriel on deck is the leadoff man, Wachinski. He singled and scored in the first. The windup. The 2 1 pitch. That stays high. Three and one the count. Well, I'll tell you the one thing that I've noticed in this game is there is no flow right now, Jeff, especially for the pitchers. No flow right now. And the 3 1 pitch. Chuck Swain couldn't hold up. He really was indecisive as to what he wanted to do with that pitch. Now goes to three and two. Well, big spot right here for Thomas. Try to get that second out. Here's the windup. And the 3 2 pitch followed over the screen behind home plate. Oh, right in the water of the pool. I just saw the splash. Oh, yeah, big splash, Jeff. But the cover's still on, so that means they're not ready to open up their pool yet, Jeff. Well, pretty soon. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that would be cold water. The, the oh, nights, yeah. The nights are still chilly, so that would be cold water. Here is the 3 2 pitch again. That is outside. Ball four. That's the first walk of the night. Charge to Caleb Thomas. And back to the top of the order now. It's Alex Kaczynski, the shortstop. He singled and scored in the first. 
Well, out of the three runs Frontier scored, there was scored on an error in the first, and there was an error on the throwing error that gave them two out of their three runs off errors. So Greenfield missing out on some opportunities. Oh, they throw to first, they got them. Wow. So that time it worked. Dubriel, well, he was kind of waiting. He said, am I out? And yeah. he is. Well, he wasn't paying attention at all, Jeff. That was so weird. Yeah. When you're on first base, you got to be ready. And Thomas took advantage of that. Thomas plucked him. And now there's two outs and nobody on. And the pitch to Gachinski. In there for a called strike at 0 1. Greenfield still leading now by a run, 4 to 3. Top half of the second inning. Friday night baseball here on Bear Country. There's the next pitch. Curveball stays high. 1 and 1. By the way, our mic crowd is quite quiet here tonight. It is. It was very loud back on Monday night. Oh, wicked, huh? Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah, Tech Turner's softball game, fastball. That is outside two and one. A big event happening tomorrow in Greenfield. I'm going to talk about that here in a second. You probably already know all about it. I do. The wind up and the pitch, curveball down the shortstop. Doobie. Came up on him high, no throw, and Skibiski reaches for the second time tonight. And that's the second error in just two innings by Doobie, who normally doesn't play shortstop. Usually the Green Waves center fielder. Nick Fasulo struck out in the first. So the tying run on again. Last time they had the tying run on, Gabriel got picked off first, but now Wachinski's there. And Nico Fasillo trying to pick him up. Yep, ended up striking out looking back in the first inning, which isn't too far back, by the way, as we're only here in the second. Come on, Come on. Okay. All right, the set and the pitch follow back over our heads. Out of play, down by the batting cages. Oh, and one. Two outs, runner on first, Greenfield four. One tier three. Thomas back on the rover. Looks over at his first baseman, Malik Moore. Sets, pauses, lets it go. And it is outside. Two balls in one strike. And Greenfield comes up in the second. They'll have the eight, nine, and one batters in their lineup. Throw to first. Close. Right, back in there is Gachinski. That was a good move, though, from Thomas over to first. That was a good move. That throw was nice. Thomas looks it at the plate. Pitches up and away. They'll take a shot down to first base, and it's in the dirt. Gets away from Moore. Bachinski will go in to second base slide and roll ahead of the throw. And now with two outs, there's a runner in scoring position. The time run. Do I qualify to say that it's been a sloppy game so far, Jeff? Yeah, they're throwing the ball around. Yeah, they are. They're throwing the ball around, both teams. So Thomas now... Looking to get out of this. It's a 2-1 count for two outs, but now a runner in scoring position. A single, presumably, will tie this game. Unless it's a line drive to left field. By the way, the center fielder and the left fielder, really, I mean, that sun is just right along the horizon right now. We take a shot at second base. Back in there is Kuczynski. If Fasulo can keep the inning alive, Grayson Luce, who started the game at second, is now pitching. He would bat next. Here's the pitch. Curveball fouled down the line in right. And now the count will be even two and two with two outs. Then Monday night. Bobby and I will be with you for the Greenfield Turners softball game. Here's the set. 
the 2-2 pitch. Curveball, line drive, base hit in the center field. And Wachinski will make the turn, and he will score. Runner moves up for second down the play. The ball gets away from Pierce, but he tracks it down quickly. We are tied at four. Wow. What a comeback here by Frontier, taking advantage of opportunities here in the second inning. You got two outs. That was a big two-out hit to be able to score that fourth run. And we're right back where we started. And now it's Grayson Luz, the pitcher. Left-handed batter, but as we saw, last half inning, a right-handed thrower. By the way, earlier this year, for folks that are wondering, Frontier ended up beating Greenfield 1-0. This is a very different game. Sure is. Here's the set. And the pitch. Ground ball down to second base. Eats up the second baseman, and he's going to reach. Another error. Wow. Fitzpatrick could not come up with it. They'll be eaten up by that grounder as he came oh, in. He tried to square up. I mean, it looked like he did most everything right except make the play. Well, I want to let you know that the Greenfield High School baseball team had a chance to play over at the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown over the weekend, and they got beat by South Hadley. They did lose in that one 10-4, but they had seven errors, Jeff, in that game. They throw to first base. Runner back in safely first and third. We got Luce on first. Pasulo on third. Frontier and Greenfield tied it four here in the top half of the second inning. Good news for Greenfield, they got two outs. You can get out of this still tied. He makes some good pitches and makes some plays in the field. Here's the set. And the pitch. Runner bluffs. He took a big secondary lead. The batter took a called strike and it's 0-1. This is Tyler Cusson. Reached on an error on the shortstop. His first side at bat. Now they throw a first base. Runner is back. Here is the set. The 0 1 pitch. Popped up in the infield. Now it's going to go to the shallow right. And the second baseman, Fitzpatrick, goes out, makes the catch with a little jump at the end. And the side is retired. But Frontier has tied the game. They scored three. We go to the last half of the second inning. Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard Frontier 4, Greenfield 4, Bear Country 95.3. All right, Greenfield coming to bat here in the last half of the second inning. A 4-4 game. And a game that's almost an hour long already. It's Arthur Fitzpatrick, the second baseman leading off. Arnaldo Rodriguez, the right fielder, hit next. And Devin Doobie, the shortstop, and lead off bat in the bat third. Well, it's been an hour. That's about how long it takes me to be able to run one lap around Best Field all the way on the outside of the fence. So I made it, Jeff. I made it. Uh, that when we, yeah, yeah. We, remember those days, buddy? Sports. Oh, oh that, yeah. That, that was your lap here. Sure was, folks. And it, and it was, was a half a mile each lap. Yeah, puffing and puffing. Oh, big time. And Moose did a great job. He struck out the side when he came in to kind of put a, a halt of things against Greenfield. First pitch to Fitzpatrick. It's taken for a ball, 1-0. and He held up on his swing. Right-handed batter wears number 14. Arthur hits out of a slightly open stance. The next pitch to him is a fastball right down Broadway for a strike, 1-1. One and one. That was a nice pitch right there by Luce. Set by Luce. Fired it right by him, 1-2 and two the count now. Good spot right here. And by the way, Luce, ever since he's come in this game, he's already got himself three strikeouts already, Jeff. Looking to make it four in a row here. The pitch. Ooh, just missed. Just missed. And it goes to two and two. He threw that ball so hard his hat fell off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was a guy, there was a kid. Oh, I'm never going to remember who he was now. Give me a minute. Next pitch fouled right off of the home plate umpire, B.J. Guerin. He's fine. 
That remains two and two. Oh, I'm trying to remember. I kept thinking this boy has a hat that's too big for him. Every time, almost every time he released the pitch, his, his cat flew. Out. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Swung on a miss strike three. It gets away from James briefly. Throws down the first base. So they record the out there. Two to three on the K. Four consecutive strikeouts now. There's one out here in the Greenfield second. And Arnaldo Rodriguez, the right fielder, steps in. That's a great first name, by the way, to his parents. I like that. Arnaldo. Arnaldo. Yeah, that's a good name. I like that name. First pitch to him is in there for a called strike outside corner, 1-0. Oh. I wonder if that fit for me. Arnaldo Campbell. That doesn't sound bad, Jeff. Not the worst. Yeah, definitely not. The set, the 0-1, that is in the dirt. And the count now even at 1-1. One, one. one out, bottom two. We are tied at four. Frontier with one in the first, three in the second. Greenfield with four in the first. Here's the next pitch. That's a nice in pitch. There for a strike, and it's one and two. Yeah, he's dealing right he now. He is. And by the way, his pace, Jeff, he's got a pace going, which is good. He, if you notice, he's getting the ball back, and he's getting right back at it. He's got a nice little pace going here. Loose. Next pitch is in the dirt, coming now even at two and two, and that's without the pitch timer. I know, <laughs> and, and not to sound not to sound like a dad joke, but he feels pretty loose right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I had Friday jokes, you, man. You, I know. You, you do all of a sudden. Oh, I do. I am, I'm sorry. <laughs> Next oh, pitch, swung uh, on a miss. Uh, yeah, and he got him. Straight three. The catcher applies the tag. Loose has gotten the first five batters out by K. Jeff. What a start. Back to the top of the order, Devin Doobie singled on the first pitch he saw and scored in the first. They give this kid credit. Comes in <laughs> off the cuff to just not plan on being the starter, and boy, he's on fire. First pitch to Doobie, a strike. Yeah, he's well, doing in. great, really. Nice delivery. He's he's got a flow. He's just getting the ball back and delivering. He's not screwing around and just getting right to it. Business is on. The 0-1 curve oh. swung on and missed strike two, and he's ahead 0-2. Wasn't that a beautiful pitch, Jeff? Wow, that baby came right in and sort of dipped right down into the dirt. That was a beauty. All right, he's a pitch away from striking out the side again. That pitch was low, one and two. Now they come into the number one there. Yeah, not a bad idea after throwing a couple of curves. Set by loose the pitch, and that's grounded down to shortstop. Glove there, a high throw off the bag. Doobie was probably by the bag anyway. Yeah, I'm going to give him a base hit, Jeff. Yeah, I am I as am. well. All right, I'm going to give him a base hit. So he's got two hits tonight. And that breaks a string of five consecutive strikeouts by loose against Greenfield batters. Here comes Jackson Campbell now. Run around first with two outs. Greenfield and Frontier tied at four here in the second. Campbell with that sacrifice bunt. Did he scored on that? He ain't got uh, way out ahead of that one. Oh, yeah. Back to the screen at zone one. I'll tell you, that was a pretty, uh, pretty hit that Campbell was able to get when he did do that because it did score that run. Bruce looks over at first base. Doobie gets his lead. This next pitch is popped foul behind home plate. James took a look, but really no play on that one. So now it's 0-2, so Loose really in control right now. All right, Jackson Kimball back in the box. Surprised that Doobie hasn't gone. He's going now. That pitch is low, and Doobie will easily slide in the second base with another steal. That, like, he, he was already stood up when the ball finally got there, Jeff. Yeah. That kid can fly. Now Campbell has an opportunity for a base hit, and you know that if it's a nice, solid base hit with Doobie at second, that could score that go-ahead run for Greenfield. A pretty safe bet that he'll uh, score safely. The one-two pitch, that's in the dirt. Nice stop there by James. That was a big stop because otherwise Doobie would be sitting on third right now. 
Or maybe more. There's or three. maybe more because we saw what he double steeled already. Yeah, it's a pretty little distance between the plate and the backstop here at GHS. Here's the next pitch. And, uh, out ahead of it, Campbell stays alive, though. Good job of making contact. It'll still be two and two. Two outs, do be on second in a 4-4 four, four game. Doobie takes his lead at second. Loose, deals to the plate. That's low, and the count now has gone full. Three and two with two outs. Tell you right now, a nice bat. Good at bat so far here by Campbell. If he gets on, you got Marhafka, and then you got Michael Pierce. Loose would like to end the inning right here. Here is the pitch, curveball, and that is high. And Campbell, after falling behind day two, he draws a two-out walk. Runners now on first and second. Marhefka at the plate in a 4-4 tie. Yeah, nice job right there by Campbell to be able to get that walk. Now opens up even more opportunities here for Greenfield with Marhefka at the plate. Michael Pierce on deck, but the game right now is with Marhefka. John with a big rip on the first pitch. Missed it. It's 0-1. Then 2-4 for Greenfield for bottom two, two on with two outs. Number two at the dish. Now Luce will step off the mound, chase Devin Doobie back to the bat. Wouldn't surprise me if he ended up trying to steal third. Pitch in the dirt, Jane scoops it. And the count now even at one and one. There's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Curveball hit softly down towards short. This could be trouble. Doobie's coming to play. They're going to take a shot at him there. So oh. He snuck in with the head first slide. What a great slide. Wow, that was awesome. Matter of fact, James had the ball, and honestly, on any other play of not going down under, he would have had him easily at the plate, but Doobie goes under the tag. Beautiful job to be able to get home. Greenfield takes the lead back again, five to four. Campbell down to second. Marhefka on first. That's uh, it's a base hit. It yeah. was a base and hit. And an RBI. Yeah, and an RBI. Exactly. In the infield. Big spot here for the big guy. Michael Pierce came up with that solid base hit back in the first. So Luz was cruising with five consecutive strikeouts, but has encountered trouble here. First pitch to Pierce. Smash! to right center field and deep. And a diving catch. Did he come up with it? He did. Oh, 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 that was beautiful. Tremendous catch out there by Eads to retire the side. He laid out and he pulled it in. Wow. Wow, that was unbelievable. That'll end the inning, but Greenfield scores a run. We go to the top half of the third inning on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. Greenfield five, Frontier four. Well, the crowd's still buzzing here at Betts Field for, from both uh, fans of both teams here, or even the neutral fans here. But How about us? That was pretty nice, wasn't it? For both of us to see. That was a rocket yeah. off the bat of Pierce. I mean, I don't think he could have hit it much harder. They don't do exit velocity at the high school level, but that was that came flying off the bat and looked like off the bat it was perfectly placed right up the gap in left center in uh, right center field. But the right fielder, Eads, who began the game on the mound, just laid out, pulled it in. And you're right, Bobby, it would have scored two. So that's a big difference. It could be 7-4 with Greenfield still batting. Instead, it's still a one-run game. Really nice job right there by him in right field to be able to make that play. That definitely would have added an extra spark to the Greenfield lineup because you would have had the opportunity of Thomas to come up next and you would have had him easily on second or third Pierce and who knows what more damage could have been done but Eads put a wrap to that by making that play. All right so Frontier will come to bat here in the top half of the third inning and again now yep we're at 707 uh, so we're we're an hour in and we've only completed two innings. We've completed two innings so kind of reminds me a little about uh those Red Sox and Yankees games, especially in the early 2000s. Yep. You know, and Pedro and Manny were still around. And 
just like you know, Sheffield and Jeter and Posada and Clemens and those guys for the Yankees. And they, they would play games three and a half, four hours for a nine-inning game. Yeah. Well, let's hope that the pace gets a little better here in this one. Let's right, see if Thomas can settle in and have a clean inning here. Leading off is Bryant. The DH first pitch to him is high for a ball, 1-0. Ethan ended up flying out to right field back in the first inning. The wind up, the pitch, late swing, couldn't catch up to it, and the count. Even at 1-1, he's smiling as he uh, heads out of the box. Looks like he tripped a little there. Yeah. Wind up by Thomas. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Fouled it back to the screen. And the count now goes to 1-2. and two. On deck, Skibiski Bannock. And then Eads. On that great catch. One ball, two strikes to the leadoff man here in the third. The pitch. Up and away. And the count now even at 2-2. Two and two. The last Sunfield remaining now is center field. The, uh, every, all the other uh, fielders are in the shade now. That pitch is high. Fastball. Now the count's gone full. Three and two. So we had him down one and two. Thomas risking uh, losing him here. There's the windup. And the payoff pitch. Nope. Bryant will step out. The last second, he was granted time by home plate umpire B.J. Guerin. All right, Bryant back in there now. And the payoff pitch, and that stays up high. Tried to yank that curveball into the zone. Couldn't do it. It's a good at bat for Bryant because, like you said, he was down uh, two strikes to one ball and came all the way back and was being patient at the plate. Now he gets himself an opportunity down at first base with the big power of... Skabiski Bannock, who ended up with a base hit back in the second. And he ended up scoring later in the inning. Greenfield 5, Frontier 4, top 3. That was the second walk charge to Caleb Thomas. They throw a pickoff toss to first base. Back standing is Bryant. Skabiski Bannock, right-handed batter. Wears double deuce for his number. Here's the pitch to him, a hot smash off the chest of the second baseman, throws the first, not in time, runners on first and second with nobody out. Boy, been a really tough night in the infield here for both teams, to be honest with you, Jeff. Well, that came up and uh, yeah. pluck, plucked him right on the chest. Sure did. And another opportunity here for Frontier here in the third. Runners on first and second, Jeff, and nobody out. Eads singled and scored his first at bat. Began the game on the mound, ended up in right field, made that great play in the last half inning. Pitch, that's in the door, great stop by Pierce. Now Pierce is one of those tall catchers. That yes, he is. You don't see that too often. Usually a lot of the guys are short and stocky. Yep. Yeah, you see the short, stocky guys behind the plate normally. Rolling all the way around to throw it ends up in center field. But We're seeing a lot of that tonight, Jeff. We've seen a lot of the pitchers throw the ball and literally miss by the players. Yeah, Bryant elected to stay on second, not risk getting tossed out at third. One and zero is the count. Nobody out. First and second for the Hawks. Greenfield leads five to four. Here is the set. Steps off. Bryant back to the bag. Yeah, I'm looking at Pierce, and uh, I'm reminded a little in terms of his build and his athleticism. I'm going to throw a name out at you. Uh, a guy that caught fairly recently in the bigs. There's the set by Caleb Thomas. The pitch in the air down the right field line. This is foul. 
And the count now goes to one and one. Joe Maurer of the Minnesota Twins. Yes. Was also a very tall but athletic type catcher. And it's, a good hitter, and a good hitter just like Pierce is. Yes. Yes. Very, very good, very good hitter. hitter. Yes. Yeah, that guy, Joe Joe Mauer, he was getting all kinds of uh, college football scholarship offers, most prominently from Florida State. I believe Bobby Batten was still alive at that point. He was saying, hey, anytime you want to come down to uh, Tallahassee, we've got a, we got a jersey for you. But he, he loved baseball. That was his sport. The pitch in there for a strike. And the count goes to one and two. But yeah, he was a, about 6'4", kind of tall, angular, very athletic. You look at him and you think pitcher, first baseman, maybe maybe a third baseman, not catcher. But yeah, and a lot of catchers aren't always great hitters either, Jeff. And he was a great hitter. With, with, with a high average hitter. Yes, high average. Yep. Another pickoff attempt at second base. But Bryant back in there now. Thomas needs him out. He's got two on here with nobody out here in the third, clinging to a one-run lead. The one-two to Eads, that is high, and the count now even at two and two. I'll tell you right now, Thomas sort of taking himself out of a decent opportunity at a flow here by throwing the ball around and trying to pick guys off. Just kind of sort of focus in here, get this first out. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch just outside. The count now goes full three and two. Do I have that right? Three and you two? do three, okay. and two, and three and two, and we've seen two, a yeah. lot. We've seen a lot of pitches here tonight between the three pitchers that are out. The two for Frontier and the one here for Greenfield here tonight. Let's see if the runners are going here. And the Frontier bench is calling for a box. Aye, huh? Yeah, they look close, didn't it? Thomas stepped off without making the throw either to a base or the plate. But no box called. I think the runners are going here. Showing every sign that they're going to be in motion here. Here's the 3-2 pitch. No, they're holding and it's ball four low. Bases loaded with nobody out. Wouldn't be surprised if I seen Coach Shure or Coach Vinny Melendez coming out to have a chat. Well, at least the catcher's coming out and talking to him. Third walk of the night, charge to Thomas. Miles Ferreira, left fielder now, will come to the plate. Well, two of the Frontier players here tonight that are playing right now. This guy up to plate, Miles Ferreira, and also the other player, Ethan Bryant, were part of my baseball programs growing up. Excellent. Uh, great kids. Great kids. Yeah, Coach Hustick is coming out. I figured that was going to happen, Jeff. All right. So, yeah. Shu. Yeah, having a chat here. Going to talk to his battery and his infielders. Yeah. Because they're in a major gym here. They still lead 5-4. to four. We're playing only the top half of the third inning here. And here's the thing, Jeff, here in the third inning, for the folks that might be just tuning in, um, turned out to be a 4-4 game at the end of two, but here in the third, you got two walks and an error are the bases loaded here for Frontier. No real base hits or anything at all. It's all been pretty much self-inflicted here by Greenfield with the two walks and the error. All right, bases loaded. Four miles per hour. Here's the first pitch in. In there for a strike, a 1-1. One, one. That's what Thomas needs to get ahead of the hour. He just needs to pound that strike zone. Well, now that he's got an opportunity to concentrate on just the batter, let's see what he really does. Because before, he was trying to worry about the runners. The 0-1 pitch. Curve stays high, 1-1. One and, one. and there is no place for Fierro to go, so... You don't want to walk them because if you do, you're going to give up that run to tie the game at five. Brian on third, Skibiski Bennick on second, Eads on first. The 1 1 pitch blew yeah. by him, and the count goes to 1 and 2. And what Thomas and Greenfield need, as much as anything, to keep this lead is a strikeout right here. Get that first out via the K and leave those runners where they are, and then work on the next guy.
the one-two pitch. And he goes, could not hold up on the swing. He strikes out, first out of the inning. Well, there's an example of what I was saying in the fact that when these pitchers have the opportunity to just concentrate on the batters, it's amazing on what their result could be. And here you go, bases loaded, nowhere to go. Gets over there against Miles Fiera, and what happens is, is he gets the K. So now let's see if he can do the same thing here with Dubriel. Jesse walked and was stranded in the first. He squares to bunt, pulls it back, and takes it for a ball, one and a one out. Runners, uh, bases remain loaded. You've got Bryant on third, Skabiski Bennick on second, Eads on first. Thomas looks in at Pierce, gets the sign. High set. Now brings it to the belt. Little pitch, battle back to the screen. Count even at one and one. On deck, top of the order. Gachinski's going to get a third at bat in three innings. I know. Um, unless, Isn't that something? Um, unless there's a double play here. Yeah, unless there is, but, but still, that's. You don't normally see a lot of that. 1 1. Here comes the runner. And he is out. An attempted steal of home. And he is out. Oh, man. That was not a happy coach in Coach Skinny on that go by Bryant. Bryant took a shot. Thomas kept his head, delivered it to the plate. Pierce applied the tag. Relatively easy play. And, and now there's two outs. And now you you might have taken that opportunity away from Guchinski getting up three times in three innings. It was a ground ball down towards short and taking it to the bag, the doobie, and the first out there. Frontier loads the bases with nobody out and does not score. Amazing. We go to the last of the third. Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. It's Greenfield five and Frontier four. Bear Country got in five point three. The last half of the third inning, it'll be Caleb Thomas, Malik Moore, Lucas Sayano. All three of those guys struck out against Luce in the first inning. Mayfield scored four that inning, but then Luce came in and slammed the door shut. And Luce is back out there. And uh, first pitch, curveball strike. It's 0 1. And Thomas struck out. In the first, he was caught looking. Makes contact this time in the hole, and the shortstop will knock it down, but no play for Gachinski. That's an infield single for Thomas and Greenfield with the leadoff man on here in the third. That's a big opportunity here for Greenfield with the one run lead, being able to get that first guy on base. But now you need more in Cyano to be able to move him around. All right, Malik Moore. Struck out his first time up. He was the second of five consecutive Ks by Luce. Pitch. And it hit him. Hit by the pitch. Wow. And now the green wave after getting out of that gym in the top of the third. They've got to rally themselves going. Two on with nobody out. And here comes Cyano. Lucas struck out. In the first, he was the struck out to end the first. He was the third of three consecutive K victims. Lights are on here at Betts Field, but not really taking effect. Probably be about another probably 20 minutes to a half hour now that we're starting to get later, lighter, longer. Oh, that's it was a nice bump by Siano. They're going to get a play at first, and they get him there, a sacrifice. One to three. Nice job there by Luca. That was good. And down to second base goes Moore. Over to third goes Thomas. Yeah, nice job right there by Luca Siano. That was a good bunt. Now that brings up a really good opportunity here because now you got Arthur Fitzpatrick and you got Arnaldo Rodriguez as your next two batters. Both haven't had a chance to make contact with the ball in this game as they both have struck out. Uh, struck out. Goes to bunt and was hiding away and did not pull his bat back. He was <coughs> definitely trying to make contact there. It's 0-1. Would have been advised to pull it back and take it for a ball, but 
Yep, he was uh, he was eager to get it down. Trying to squeeze in a run. Greenfield uh, did that earlier. Jackson Campbell. The yellow pitch. He scored a bunt again. That's followed down the first base line. Now it's 0 2, and that should remove, I would think, any bunt opportunity here. Yeah, and it may not because of the fact that Arthur is struggling right now at the plate. He's been struggling this year. And maybe you might not. You might end up trying to use him to try to see if he can do it again. It wouldn't surprise me if he pulls that bat out. Here is the set by Luce. The 0-2 pitch, he's swinging, followed it back out of play. And the count remains 0-2. The play I love, and high school batters, generally speaking, aren't experienced enough and have the skill set to do that. You know, fake bunt, bring it back, and then slash it. Yeah. That pitch is high, and the count goes to 1-2. and two. But when you see a major leaguer do that, mm. you know, he loves the bunt, pulls the guy in, and then just shortens up and just pokes it by the charging infielder. That is a, just a beautiful baseball play. Absolutely. The one-two pitch, curveball, called straight three. See, and they had a chance to maybe go with that opportunity of the bunt. Instead, he went down looking. Two outs now with, again, runners on second and third. It will come down to the number nine batter, Arnaldo Rodriguez, the right fielder. Oh, for one, he struck out. And the pitch is high. That goes to 1 0. Oh. Ronaldo was the uh, second out of that second inning. Well, if he gets on, you got Devin Doobie, who's already been on twice here tonight. Next pitch to Rodriguez. That is high. Two balls and no strokes. Well, this is where Ronaldo's got to come through and be able to try to get his. Bat out either to try to make a play or be able to try to get to first base so they can get the top of the order up here. Loose with 6K so far, but he's behind on the count here. That pitch is high. 3-0 to the number nine batter. Well, I know what I'm doing. I'm taking two. Taking two. Yes, I am. Well, Loose needs to find the strike zone here. And that was low, and the ball gets away from the catcher. Quick shuffle. And diving head first and scoring is Caleb Thomas, six to four Greenfield. Wow. Nice hustle right there by Thomas. And that was ball four to Rodriguez. Picks up another run for Greenfield. As Thomas scored on that misplay. And Malik Moore is sitting at third base now. And Devin Doobie. The two singles and two runs scored up for the Green Wave. They now lead by two, six to four. Loose trying to settle and get this last out. Keep it a two run game. Here's the pitch. That's in there for a strike. Nice pitch to Doobie. It's 0 1. Right on the inside corner. On deck is Jackson Campbell. He's been on twice as well. Next pitch, that's in the dirt. Here comes the next run. Scoring easily is Malik Moore. Seven for Greenfield, wild pitch. Wow, we have seen a lot of these runs that are scored unearned here tonight, Jeff. A lot of unearned runs. You see 11 on there between both teams, but a lot of it is because of pass balls, errors, and folks that were getting walked. Coming around and scoring. Yes, it has not been a clean game. Runner on second now. That is Rodriguez. Pitch in the dirt. Two balls and one strike to count to Doobie. Campbell on deck. Infield has scored two in the inning so far. Looking to attack on at least one more here. The set, the pitch in the dirt. James makes the stop. Three balls and one strike to Devin Doobie. And yes, he is the Greenfield shortstop tonight, not the center fielder. The next pitch in the dirt. That is ball four. Rodriguez will hold it second. So Rodriguez on second, Doobie on first. Jackson Campbell up with two outs here. Seven four Greenway. Well, big spot here for Campbell. Try to be able to add some more runs for Greenfield here in the bottom of the third. 
Bruce was cruising for a while. In fact, he had had those five consecutive strikeouts. He sat only one pace since then. As Greenfield is starting to get to him. There's a curveball. It's a strike. It's in the dirt ball. Both runners will move off Rodriguez to third. Doobie to second. Now a single will almost assuredly score two a Doobie speed. Exactly. You know, another opportunity for Greenfield to be able to capitalize here with Campbell. He ended up getting a base hit in the first inning and he walked in the second. See what he does here in the third. Owen won the count. The next pitch, fastball, check swing, and it's followed back to the screen. And Campbell behind now, 0-2. Well, now if you're loose, you may you may want to try to throw that curveball, but here's the thing. You don't want to throw it in the dirt that it's going to go bouncing off because that could score another run. 4-2. Yeah, well, that's way up there. High that pitch is high, not close. 1-2. and two. Campbell made the easy decision to lay off. Well, he needs to know also that, you know, that he is going to maybe try to throw that nasty curve in the dirt. There's a curveball, grounded, in front of the plate, picked up by the pitcher, throws down the first, and the side is retired. The Greenfield tags on two more runs. We go now to the fourth inning here at Bettsfield. Greenfield High School, Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard, Greenfield 7, Frontier 4. Well, it is Caleb Thomas going back to the hill for Greenfield. He had the bases loaded against him in the Frontier third, pitched out of it. He was aided by a Frontier runner out at the plate in an attempted steal of home. But Greenfield with four in the first, one in the second, two in the third for their seven runs. Frontier with one in the first, three in the second for their four. see did Greenfield make some defensive changes no it doesn't look like it Jackson's still out there and left no we saw coach Lupo the Greenfield head over the frontier bench and Malik Moore is at first everything it's Patrick at second yeah so yeah the, the nine on the diamond or the nine that were out there before all right, for Frontier, Alex Skuczynski, his third at bat in four innings. In the first inning, he singled and scored, reached on an error on the shortstop in the second and scored again. He's got a big part of the mix for the Hawks so far tonight. First pitch by Thomas, fastball, and that is in there for a strike. It's 0-1. Chinsky, right-handed batter. It's out of an open stance. His left foot is down towards third base. Now brings it in. Nice shot into center field. That's a base hit. And it will get past the center fielder, Marhefka. And easily in the second base with a leadoff double, Alex Kuczynski. Nice job. That was a beautiful hit. Excellent job right there by Alex to be able to hit that right there in the gap and got himself a nice leadoff double here in the fourth. For the fourth consecutive inning, Frontier with the leadoff man on. They've had, that, they've had plenty of base runners. That has not been the issue. 7-4 Greenfield, nobody out runner on second. And here is Nico Fasulo. First ball swinging, skies it to center field and having some trouble closing late, unable to come up with it is Marhefka holding on third base because he had to hold up to see the play was Gachinski. That was a double for Fasulo, but unfortunately only one bag was able to be progressed there by Gachinski, so now it's second and third. Well, I thought that was a good call there by yeah. Skinny Williams, the frontier coach. He's coaching third. You know, there's nobody out. You don't want to get a runner potentially tossed out at the plate for the first out. Especially when you're down. That was a very smart coaching move right there by Coach Williams. And you got some good hitters coming up, including Loose right now. Now Thomas steps off. He'll work out of the stretch here. Loose popped up the shortstop. 
And popped up to second base. 0 for 2. First ball swinging. Line drive in the hole between short and third. That's an RBI single for loose. It is 7 to 5. Well, there's three big hits in a row there for Frontier. Off of Thomas. Something you might want to look at here. As now you got runners on first and third with nobody out. And Cussin, their big guy at the plate. Reached on an error, and Bobby, I can't read my chicken scratch, scratch his last at bat. He ended up uh, flying out to second base. That's right. Coach Huznick's coming out. And I, 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 he's gonna make I, a move. I, I think he is going to make a move. I think. I wonder if he'll go with Devin Doobie and bring Campbell back to short. We'll have to see. No, he's taking the ball. All so right. Thomas is done. He is handing it to Devin Doobie, it looks like. There you go. Now is Campbell going to stay in uh, okay, left field or is Campbell going to? Let's see. Where is Caleb Thomas going? Yeah. He is going out to shortstop. Okay. Okay, is Campbell going to be the one pitching, or is it Devin Doobie? It's got to be Doobie. Yeah, it's going to be Devin. Devin, how he has the ball right now, doesn't he? I think. No, it looks like Campbell. Because the first baseman, Malik Moore, is out there with the catcher. So I think Campbell's going to be the one that's going to take over. Well, they're still talking, and now home plate umpire B.J. Guerin is going to go out and say, okay. What's uh, what's what's the deal here? Where is that Devin Doobie? I can't even tell. It's got to be Devin Doobie though. It has to be because they just switched the switch to shortstop. Yeah, Jackson's still out there in left field. Okay. They taking something off of his uh, wrist because he's pitching. Yep, they got it. All right, it is Devin Doobie. So Devin Doobie will take over. And he had to change his shades too. He had uh, sunglasses on, Jeff. Yep. All right, so Doobie now will take his warm-up tosses. We're playing the top half of the fourth inning. Yeah. Greenfield leading Frontier 7-5. to five. That's our score on the Greenfield Stadium playing scoreboard. We'll take a quick 30-second break. We're back after this. Bear Country 95.3. All right, Devin Doobie with runners on first and third. Nobody out. First pitch in the dirt. He really uncorked that first pitch fastball. Nice stop there by Michael Pierce. It's 1-0. Batter is cussing and his teammates go, let's go, Cuss. See if he can deliver. Runner is going. Pierce will throw through. It's cut off, though, by the shortstop, Thomas. And basically just treated positions. Treated positions with uh, Devin Doobie. Yeah. Two balls, no strikes. Second and third, nobody out the pitch. Two and one, got the strike. Set by Doobie. Here's the pitch in the dirt. Nice stop there. Um, Michael Pierce, three this, and one. Again. This could open up an opportunity of bases loaded here for Ethan Bryant, who's got some power. The set. The 3 2 pitch. Ground ball, and it gets through Thomas in the hole. That's going to score one. All oh, the runner was coming on third, and then tripped, slipped. That's loose. Had the dart back in there, but the runner did score. It's 7 to 6. Well, another nice job right there by Frontier. All of a sudden, they were down by three, and now they're down by one. There's absolutely no outs. Here in the top of the fourth with a runner on third and also a runner on first. Yep, Luce is on third, Cussin on first for Bryant. Here's the set by Doobie, the first pitch to Bryant. That is outside for a ball outside, and the count is 1-0. and oh. Bryant flew out to right field and walked his next time up. Here's the 1-0 pitch. It's inside knocked him off the plate. 2-0 to count. Now well, Doobie getting a little bit wild here. You gotta remember now, you got a guy that's very solid up next. 
right in the middle of the lineup, and that is Skubisky Banik, who's on deck. Throws over to first base. Well, I'll tell you, Ugh. not liking that at no. all. That too many bad things can happen. I Absolutely. Mean, you throw it wild, you're in a tie game. And Michael Pierce is going to go out. And maybe, I mean, we're making a presumption here, but he may very well be saying, look, buddy, let's just play catch. Bring it in to me. I agree. Bring it right to me. We'll get out of this together. Oh, a chance right here for Bryant to be able to load up the bases here if he gets on. The 2-0 pitch with nobody out. There's a ground ball wide of third, and that's the first strike of this at bat. Two and one, the count on Bryant. On deck is Skibiski Bannock. Now Frontier loaded the bases with nobody out in the third. Didn't score, but they have scored twice so far here. There's the next pitch. Runner is going. Pierce will eat it. Pitch was uh, inside for a ball. It's three and one now, and we'll see. Pierce looks towards the dugout, saying, "We're just going to put him on and load the bases, or you know, go after him here." And if so, what pitch are we going to use? Pierce lays down the sign. The set, the pitch, swung on and missed. Strike two, three oh. and two. The count. Boy, that was a pitch that I think each Brian wanted back. Yes. That was a good pitch to hit right there. And he missed it. Here's the set. The 3-2 pitch. They go to the curve. It stays high. And the bases are loaded with nobody out. And here comes Skibiski Bannock. It's a big spot for this guy. Singled and scored in the second. Reached on an infield there his last time up. And to your crowd, getting into it here. They are very close to tying or taking the lead. A late scoring there. And the count is 0-1. Fastball. A very fast fastball. Great field pitchers tonight. Struggling with the command. Next pitch, that's a line drive. Base hit in the center field. The tying run is scored, and the go-ahead run is on the way to the plate. Shot at third, no. Runner moves up on the throw, and Frontier has taken an 8-7 to seven lead. Nice job right there by Skubisky Bannock to be able to be patient there at the plate. Plate's two. And he's also sitting now at second base. Second and third, nobody out here for Frontier. Boy, this has really turned out to be a big inning for them and really a big collapse for the green wave here in the top of the fourth. Beads is up, he singled and scored and walked his last time up. So he's been on twice. The pitch, hot smash in the center field for a base hit. This is going to score at least one. No, they're going to hold up Skibiski Bannock though. The throw comes all the way through and the runner moves up. It's 9-7 Red Hawks. And that was a really good job being able to hold him. Why would you want to send him, Jeff, when you have nobody out? Yep. And you're on a hit parade right now. Everybody's hit. Everybody's hit. You got it. Not a very good spot here for the Green Wave. This is the big collapse here in the fourth. And right now, five have already played it here for the Red Hawks. Took it from 7-4 Greenfield to 9-7 infield grounder. And the third baseman will run him back to the bag. That'll be an in infield single. So now you, you got your eighth batter in Fiera, who just got on. Miles is in. And now you got Dubriel, the ninth hitter. And this will be the ninth batter in the inning. No outs, Jeff. Give me a walk and getting a fielder's choice, six unassisted, as Doobie, who was done at shortstop, took it to the bag himself to end that uh, third inning. Which is low for a ball, one and all. The endless inning has really gotten away from the way here. The windup and the pitch, curveball swung on a miss, strike one, one and one to count. I'm not sure 
who Greenfield would go to next, maybe, maybe Jackson. Yeah, Jackson Campbell would probably be the next one, I would think. There's the pitch that's in the dirt. Pierce stops it. Nice block there to prevent the 10th run from scoring. Yeah, and Doobie's really having trouble right now. They're, they've they found his number. It is the windup and the pitch that's grounded down to the first base coaching box. And now the count even at two and two. And wanting and getting a new baseball is Devin Doobie. The Bluefield center fielder turned shortstop turned pitcher tonight anyway. Yeah. Looking to record the first out of the inning right here. Here's the pitch. Followed back towards the frontier crowd down the first base side. This game right now is an hour and 45 minutes in, and we're only in the top of the fourth with nobody out. And if you were tuning in for Knights with Elena, we'll get to her eventually, but maybe not. <laughs> Called strike three. Oh, they Here's got him. Bit, one of the outside corners, so Dubry goes down on strikes. And look who's up again. Guy that we've seen three times already, Jeff. He's been in the middle of everything. Alice Kaczynski walked and scored, reached on an error and scored, doubled and scored. That's a nice night. Bases loaded. One out. Pitch. Swung on a miss. It's 0-1. So maybe getting that K will get Doobie into a groove here. Yeah. Well, it's a good time to get in a groove right now, especially after you already gave up five. Here's the windup. And the pitch, curveball, foul back well. Yeah. And Greenfield batter has a frontier batter at 0-2. I'm not sure how many times that have happened tonight. You know, what if the frontier on deck guys go grab that ball? They got your job there. Yep, you got it. Oh, you kind of forgot. Or one of his teammates went to get it. Yep. At 0-2 now, the count. To Gachinski with the bases juiced. Her ball is high. One and two. Wind up. And the pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike three. So consecutive keys now here by Doobie. And here comes Nico Fasulo. He struck out, RBI single, doubled and scored this inning. It's been a fine going inning for Frontier. Hawks lead at 9-7. Two outs and the bases juiced. Fasulo takes a pitch in the dirt. It's 1-0. If Fasulo can keep it going, we'll see Grayson Luce who had a big 2-1 single earlier this inning. The windup, the 1-0. Hit on the ground, down the shortstop, saying that we'll take it to the bag. That will retire the side. The Frontier puts up a five spot, and we go to the last of the fourth. Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. Frontier nine, Greenfield seven on Bear Country 95.3. And Frontier is going to bring Grayson Loose back out onto the mound. He got off to a great start and he came on in relief of the starter. In fact, at that time, it was all strikeouts, five consecutive strikeouts. Then got touched up for a run in his uh, second inning of work and gave up two runs in the Greenfield third. We're only in the bottom of the fourth inning here of this seven inning game. Frontier leading by two, nine to seven. John Marhefka will lead off. Michael Pierce and then Caleb Thomas. Loose and loose. We'll work out of the set. First ball swinging into left center field and a diving catch. Did he come up with it? No. Nope. He didn't. Great attempt there by the center fielder, Fasulo. He was kind of coming in towards. The gap, shallow left center field, unable to come up with it. Here comes Michael Pierce, going through with the leadoff guy on. 
Pierce, RBI singled and scored. The pitch is low. And then the last time up, he hit a laser to right field that was caught brilliantly by the right fielder. Here's the pitch in the dirt. Malhefka will hang on for space. Nice job behind the plate making that stop. <laughs> that could have easily gone through the wickets out to the back of the backstop. Here is the set by Luce. The pitch that is low with a fastball. Three and over the count to Pierce. So I mean, hey, you down two, you yeah. down two with a good hitter, Jeff. What do you do? Yeah, I'd be really careful here. <laughs> yeah. I'm very careful. Yep. I mean, you make the wrong pitch, it could be tied. It's true. You don't want to make this too fat. In there for a strike. Nice pitch there by Grayson. And the count now three and one. High and inside is a good pitch for a guy like him. You know, high and inside's good. You do that again, it's going to make it tough on Pierce. Next pitch to Pierce. Oh, oh, oh. He spun him, nearly hit him. Did he close him? No. It was going to be ball four anyway. Yeah. Either way, he was going to reach. So, Greenfield with two on and nobody out will call it a base on ball. You know, there's an old saying, Jeff, called, who wants this game? <laughs> Caleb Thomas struck out looking his first at bat, and then he reached on an infield single and scored his last at bat. From tier nine, Greenfield seven. Here's the pitch. In there for a strike, it's 0-1. Nice pitch there by Luce. So here we go. Runners on first and second. Nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth for the Green Wave. Next pitch, curveball here on the ground. Down to third base, bobbled, and everybody's going to reach. Wow. Base is loaded with nobody out, and now here comes the Green Wave. Boy, we have seen we have seen everything tonight. We've seen it all. So Thomas reaches on the E5. And here comes Malik Moore. He was hit by a pitch his last time. Up and struck out his first time up. Bookends are in on first and third. Chuck Swain down to third. They're gonna have a play at the plate. Force play. They get the out there. Five to two. So Moore will reach on the fielder's choice. Again, five to two. Marhefka eliminated on the bases. Pierce moves up to third. Thomas up to second. And here comes Cyano. Luca, right handed batter. Frontier leading, Greenfield by two, nine to seven. They trailed seven four before they scored five in the fourth. There's a called strike one, it's 0 and one. One out, second and third. Cyano back in there, and now we have a stoppage of play. I'm not sure what BJ Garen was saying to uh, the pitcher, but we're good to go. Set by loose the pitch. In there for a strike, and it's quickly 0-2. Looking to get out of the jam with no run scored. He's uh, got one out already and two strikes on this next batter. The pitch swung on and missed, strike three. Ah, that was not a good at bat right there for Luca. Seven strikeouts for Luce. And here comes Fitzpatrick, who has already struck out twice, so he's got a chance to get out of this with no run scored. Bottom of the order has got to start helping out here for Greenfield. Bases loaded with two outs, pitch in the dirt. Nice stop there by the catcher, preventing Greenfield's eighth run from scoring. I tell you, James has done a good job behind the plate. A lot of the stuff that he wasn't able to get were just wild pitches, Jeff, that were in the dirt. The pitch that is low and away. Nowhere to put Fitzpatrick here. Arnaldo Rodriguez is on deck and then Doobie at the top of the order. 
Two outs here. Bases loaded. Greenfield has not scored yet. They trail by two. The pitch. That is low. Three and oh. Taking two. To the, I'm down two. To the number eight batter. This is Arthur Fitzpatrick. Set by loose. The pitch. That is high. Ball four. Four pitch walk. It's 9 8. You know, it's always a little bit of a frustration when you end up walking an eighth or a ninth batter, not giving them a chance to hit the ball. And unfortunately, that right there was what Luce did. It is the third walk charge to Luce. And the first pitch to the number nine batter, Arnaldo Rodriguez, in there for a strike. Bases remain loaded, but now there are uh, two outs. The pitch swinging, missing, it's 0-2. Well, Luce might be able to get out of this with only one. Rodriguez has struck out and walked. In the ball game tonight, 0-2, two outs, bases loaded. The pitch, call, it's strike three. Eighth strikeout on the night for Luce, but Greenfield does get a run to draw a little bit closer. We go to the fifth, and our score on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard, it's Frontier 9, Greenfield 8 on Deer Country, 5.3. Hey, <laughs> All right, Luce will lead off for Frontier here in the fifth. Hawks lead by one, 9-8. First pitch is low for a ball. One ball, no strikes. Doobie's really got to settle down here. And, you know, after giving up all those hits, he was able to get the last three batters. Hopefully he can do that here to help his team. And the swing follows back to the screen guy on plate. And the count now goes to one and one. It'll be Luce, Cusson, and Bryant. Here in the fifth inning for Frontier, Hawks lead by a score of 9-8. to eight. Next pitch, that is high. And the count now goes to 2-1. and one. Well, the lights on the field, they're definitely in full effect now here, Jeff. Yep. Two one pitch just missed outside. Three and one the count. Frontier, by the way, through the first four innings, they got the leadoff guy on every inning and they scored in every inning except for the third. The three one pitch. Ball four, and once again the leadoff man is on. Wow. Boy, that's something you don't want happening every inning. Frontier nine, Greenfield eight. Nobody out, runner on first, top five. And here comes Tyler Cusson. Well, Cusson ended up with that base hit, ended up getting a couple RBIs, and he also scored a run last inning as well. That was off of uh, Caleb Thomas at the time, but that uh, began a hit parade. Sure did. First pitch strike, it's 0-1. Here is the set and the pitch. Just outside. One and one to count. On deck is Brian. Truly a beautiful night for baseball here tonight, folks. Yep, comfortable temperatures. Tends to be in the 50s tonight. So you take a shot at first, run her back easily. Luce has taken a very big lead. That pitch is high, gets away from Pierce as it popped out of his mitt, and Luce will move up to second base. Boy, we've had a lot of I was, pass balls. I was going to say that was a pass ball. Yeah, yeah it just, it just kind of squirted out of Michael Pierce's catcher's mitt. Exactly. Boy, we've had a lot of those tonight, though. Yep. So we're running on second with nobody out. Frontier leads by one, looking to Tack on here. Pitch, line drive, base hit in the center field. 
They're going to send loose. He will score standing up. It is 10-8 Redhawks. Boy, what a nice hit right there by Cussin. Boy, nice shot right up the middle there with a line drive. And now you get the big guy, Ethan Bryant, who's already walked twice here tonight. Up the plate. Bryant will step in on the right side, so the Hawks get their uh, two-run advantage back. Crazy game here tonight at Bets Field. Yeah, absolutely. This thing's had more twists and turns than one of those amusement rides that you might have been on. Popped up on the first pitch. Foul down the line. Uh, Malik Moore comes over in foul territory, makes the catch, runs the ball back into the infield. That is the first out of the inning. So Brian is out on a P3, as I call it. And here comes Liam skibiski Bannock. He had a two-run single his last time up. Pitch is low for a ball. You know, one of the coolest things that you can see is if you ever wanted to, they have a place at Fenway Park where you can get what they call an official scoring book. Yes. And it gives you the real of what everything is, Jeff, to be able to know how to official. Ooh. Before the first nearly got him. Though. Yeah. To officially be able to score a game, Jeff, they even give you what the um, special abbreviations are for everything. It's really cool. I've got a great abbreviation for you in a minute here, Bobby. All right. Stick around for this, folks. You're going to love it. <laughs> Curveball in there for a strike. No, it was a ball. Two balls and one strike. One out, runner on first. 10-8 Frontier. Here is the set. And the pitch by Doobie. Curve in there for a strike. And the count even now at two and two. Nice pitch here. Skabisky Danik at the dish. Here is the pitch that is in the dirt for a ball. A lot of pitches tonight. A lot of runs tonight. A lot of errors tonight and a lot of pass balls tonight. Seems oh. like a night of a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. A lot of base runners. Why don't I add that in, Jeff? Yep. <laughs> There's the set and the pitch. Ooh, that was hit hard. Hot smash in the center field for a base set. Cussin will move up to second base. Uh, Bryant, that is, I should say. As, uh... Yeah, that is Cussin. That is Cussin, yep. I should say. That is Bryant. Uh, he ended up uh, popping, out. popping out over in uh, foul territory. Yep. So Wyatt Eads is up. He had an RBI single his last time up as Frontier had three consecutive singles. 10-8 Red Hawks with one out here in the fifth. Pitch is fouled back to the screen. It's over. Okay, so the, right. the scooter, Phil Rizzuto of the Yankees, their Hall of Fame shortstop, later became the, uh, their broadcaster. And every person that scores a game, they have their own little system of doing it. Sometimes it looks like a botched calculus exam. There's the set by Doobie. Pitch. Skied to first base side out of play. Right fielder coming over. And a diving attempt did not catch it. Nice try there by Rodriguez. That was a great hustle. So, you know, BB is based on balls. K is a strikeout, a backwards K. Caught, looking. caught looking. Yep. Four to three. That's a ground out to the second baseman. Six, four, three, double play, whatever it might be. Well, sometimes over the course of a long game, like maybe this one, the broadcaster might miss something. There's the set. And there's a line dry foul down the line and right on the count where we made 0-2. Well, there was this one game, and I'm not sure who, it was probably Bill White that Phil Rizzuto was working with. And White said, now oh, Scooter, here comes Dave Winfield. 
He walked, and what did he do his last time up? There's the set by Doobie. Pitch, check swing high. Did he go? Oh, he yes, went. he did. And it rings him up. Second out of the inning. So Bill White says, what did, what did Dave Winfield do his last time up? What does it say in your book, Phil? And the scooter says, WW. And he's like, what, what's WW? Is, like, is that like a double walk, walk, walk? Or, <laughs> WW, what the heck does that mean? There's the first pitch to Ferrance. Low ball one. And the scooter said, well, Bill, WW wasn't watching. <laughs> I like that, Jeff. I like that. It's good. And I've, I think I've got a few of those on my book, I guess. I must have a couple of WWs. Next pitch. Swung on and missed. So quickly, 0-2. Ah, uh, Miles went after that one. That was way high. So an uh, opportunity here for Devin Doobie to get out of there with just that one run. Looks in at Michael Pierce. Here's the pitch. In there for a call strike, and it's one and two. Two outs. Runners on first and second. Frontier 10, Greenfield 8. Here in the fifth. Long set. Pitch. Hit in the air into center field. That's going to drop. The runner's going to turn third. He will come to the plate. He will score with a very awkward dive. Tyler Cusson is in. Yeah, and RBI single by Ferreira. And it's now 11 8 Hawks. Yep. There it is. Two more runs for Frontier. All of a sudden, a game that was 7 4 is now. 11-8. Seven runs. And now we have a timeout. We are going to get a runner, I do believe. You know, when you uh, when you hear a basketball, you hear of like a 10-0 run. Or, yes. But in this one, it's a 7-4 run, really, in this baseball game. And all of a sudden, it's 11-8. And uh, Frontier picking up a three-run lead here in the top of the fifth. And they're not done yet. Doobie was nearly out of it just with that one run. Now he's giving up a second run, looking to slam the door shut right here. Hit in the air in the shallow right center field. And the center field of our half ground waves off Rodriguez, puts it away to retire the side. But two more for the Hawks. We go to the last half of the fifth inning. Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. It's Frontier 11, Greenfield 8, Bear Country, 5.3. We are back at Greenfield High School. Devin Doobie shows bunt, pulls it back, takes a strike. It's 0-1. It will be Doobie, Campbell, and Marhefka here in the Greenfield fifth. Green Wave trailing now 11-8. Next pitch by Luce is a ball. And the count now is one and one. Already two hours and 15 minutes into this one. Ooh, I was right in the dirt. Put you in the dirt. We're playing seven at least. If Greenfield can mount a comeback, who knows? Who knows? But I, you know, the way things have gone tonight, it would not surprise me if we play eight or nine. Yeah. <laughs> And it pitches low for a ball. And if that's the case, with the pace of the play tonight, maybe they'll turn the lights off when the sun comes up. We'll, we'll finish it in daylight again. Yeah. A game that began and ended in daylight with night in between. Yeah, sounds like one of those country songs, Jeff. <laughs> in there for a strike. Count oh. now goes full to Devin Doobie. Three and two, Jackson Campbell on deck. That's right. The sun's already gone down. Ooh, that was a good curve. And able to make contact with it is Devin Doobie. Count will uh, remain full three and two. See, Jackson Campbell did his job. The ball went back to the screen. He was all over it. 
Yep. The Frontier Kid, who shall remain nameless, was asleep at the wheel last time. Here we go. How many innings, Jeff? This is amazing. How many innings do you think that there's been games where they've had a light night like tonight where there's been so many leadoff guys yeah. that have been able to get on base? Both teams. Yeah, not many. And tonight, it's been a big night for both teams Great. to get leadoff batters. Frontiers had the leadoff guy on in all four innings. Greenfields had the leadoff guy on four of the five. See? Totally unbelievable. Whoa! The pickoff attempt against Doobie. They want to keep him close, but he's not the big batter. If you're Frontier, you've got a three-run lead. The time runs in the on-deck circle. You, you got it. You just got to go after this batter. Well, they throw again the first. There is the set and the pitch. Hot smash right back through the box. Backhanded by the second baseman. They'll have to eat it. That's an infield single for Jackson Campbell. And Greenfield now with two on and nobody out. And here we go. Here we go again. <laughs> Boy, you know, you get a lead in this game, and it is pretty much meaningless. I know. Me. It's been it like this mean, all night. It doesn't even get a lead. It doesn't mean anything. Yep. It's another one of those typical Frontier Greenfield games, but instead of it being a very low-scoring game, this one's turned into a high-scoring game. All right. First and second. Nobody out for John Marhefka. First pitch to John. First ball swinging. It's up to middle. Diving step by the shortstop. Strong throw to first. Got a hole. Oh, beautiful double play. No, did not get the out. Oh, okay. Oh, wait a minute. They're saying he's safe at first. Wow, so everybody's safe. Hold on. Oh, Coach Skinny's coming out. They're going to say that's an infield hit. What a play, though. Wow. By the shortstop, Gachinski. So Marhepka is safe, and Campbell was safe at second. So now we have bases loaded. Nobody else here, Jeff. For Michael Pierce. Look at that. What a spot for him. I tell you, he, he gets an extra base set. We're tied. Here's the set. First pitch to Pierce. It's in the dirt. Gets away from the catcher. Here comes Doobie. The play at the plate. He's safe. Doobie. He is on fire. That kid can run. And it's 11-9. Wow, Jeff. We, we have seen everything. And the runners did advance as well. Campbell moved up to third. Marhefka to second. And now a single. A single by Pierce here could Coach. tie the game. An extra base set certainly would tie the game. Looks like Luce is coming out. Yeah. So who are they going to go with now? Are they going to go with Bannock? Uh, Skibisky Bannock? Nope. They're going with... Are they going back to Ed the Ed is starter? again? Wow. They're going to Eads again? Eads is coming back. Eads is coming back out there for the Hawks. He started the game. Really struggled. Did he <coughs> trying to see when he the Greenfield first? He didn't record it out, right? He he did, did not. not. No, no, because nope. He had the first four guys reach a single. Then there was that sacrifice. Doobie ended up scoring on that sacrifice to score Doobie. Marhefka reached on the air. RBI single by Pierce, and then in comes. In comes Luce, who uh, came in with five consecutive strikeouts. That seems like it was a long time ago. Wow. Actually, it was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now Eads is going to be back out there now. So how about this? They're going to go back to the starter. Wow. I, I've i never seen that before in I'm high school. To, I'm trying to think if I've seen it either. Wow. Well, like I said, Jeff, we've seen everything that you would see <laughs> on that wild amusement ride right here in this game tonight. Yeah, I'm just waiting We've to see, seen it all. I'm just waiting to see a triple play. Yeah, that would be cool. And, you know, the way the game has gone, it won't be one of those, you know, five to four to three around the horn triple plays. If there's a triple play, it's going to be, it's going to go like from nine to two to six <laughs> to two to one to three. 
And then we're gonna have you solve the problem after. <laughs> Oh, man. If that happens, I'll make sure that my book doesn't say WW. Wasn't That's working. right. Yeah, yeah, you don't. I, I love that story about Rizzuto. Yeah. Uh, I'll sing you one about the Yankees. They, they've had some characters in their history between, yep. between the scooter and, and Yogi. All right. Michael Pierce in a big spot here for Greenfield. And they're only down two now with that play at the plate that was no good 11-9 is our score and Eads goes all the way back to the mound by the way he's the one who robbed Pierce yeah. in right field yeah yeah and now he's going to try to strike it out here there that, you go that's what Frontier needs here a strikeout bases uh second and third with nobody out two run game here's the first pitch to Pierce he swing and popped it up behind the plate James will take a look and it's just beyond the fence. That was close. Yeah, that would have been one Frontier would have really wanted right there oh, if they yeah. could have got him on that. But no, Pierce is still alive. One ball, one strike. He looks in for the sign. He's at the belt. Let's it fly. Foul ball off on the right side. Well, Bobby, it's been three pitches, but this is a different ease than start of the game. He's Definitely. Focused, he's focusing on his catcher. He's just making his pitches. He's, he's dealing with a tough customer. You know, there's no guarantee how this is going to turn out. Yeah. But, but he also realizes that he can't be doing what he did in the first inning, and that was checking on all those runners all the time. Now it's concentrating on the plate. He's looking in at his catcher. Now there's a timeout. He was taking a very long time. The slowest worker I ever saw in recent times in Major League Baseball. And, and Bobby, this guy could pitch. But he took forever. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Pitch. Oh! Green, he got him. He's robbed him twice tonight, Bobby. He's sure him has. Way. Yes, he has. Got him on that Rob play over in right field that would have easily played at three. And there you go, bases loaded, and he gets Pierce looking. For Caleb Thomas. And now Eads will go to work on him. Frontier still leads by two, 11-9, but the tying runs are on base with one out. Here is the pitch. Popped up in the infield, right side. Second baseman comes in, puts it away. Wow. And there's two outs. That was Cusson who made the catch. I know, check that. That was, uh, Luce is now back there, out there at second. Greenfield, are they going to squander a huge opportunity here? Well, it could happen. It's up to Malik Moore. Fielder's choice got hit by a pitch and struck out. A little bit of everything here from Malik Moore. Well, maybe he could add a base hit to that. Malik did score in this game after he got hit by the pitch. 11-9 Frontier here, bottom five. The pitch. Oh, way out ahead of that one. Foul tip. And the count is 0-1. Yeah, that slow worker I was referring to. And I don't think he could pitch today with pitch timer. Josh Beckett. Oh, he was slow. Yeah, But he was good. And he was very effective. Yeah, when well. he finally let the darn ball go, he yeah. oftentimes it missed bats. <laughs> Here's the pitch. Ground ball back towards second base. Backhanded stop. Can't make the play. Greenfield has scored a run to make it 11 to 10. Runners on first and third. Wow. Campbell gets to score a run. Malik Moore is able to get himself to first base. And here we go. 11 10. Call that an infield single ball. I gave it a single. Yes, I did. All right. And an RBI. And an RBI. Campbell scores. So it's a two run yep. inning for Greenfield. It's now 11 10. And here comes Luca Siano. He has struck out twice, also sacrificed. Well, Luca can come through here. Hasn't been on base yet tonight. This will be a big spot for him. They will hold more at first. He represents the go ahead run. Pitch. Rounded foul down the line at third. Well, just remember, Jeff, if you. If you start throwing over to first base and it's a pass ball, you got a runner on third. He could tie this game. Got to concentrate on Lucas Siano. 
Frontier 11, Greenfield 10, two outs, two on, bottom five. And now a delayed steal. They try to, they try to steal a run, but the runner at third had to hold as the pitcher Eads ate it, so that's a defensive indifference. Down the second base goes Moore, so now a base hit could give Greenfield the lead. Here's the pitch to Cyano, and that's outside. Nice stop by James. That could have tied the game. Oh, right easily. There, yeah, that was a great job right there by James. Could have tied the hey, game. James had a good game here tonight. Like I said, a lot of the stuff that he wasn't able to get was stuff that most people wouldn't have gotten. A lot of pass balls and a lot of stuff way over his head. Can't do nothing about that. Here's the set. And the pitch. Fowler back to the screen. One ball, two strikes, two outs, two on runners on second and third. Frontier leads by one. It's been a roller coaster of a ride. It sure has. And it's a, it's one of those bad roller coaster rides in a way. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Santa will call a time and step out. Yeah, you're right, you're right, Bobby. Just about everything has occurred in this within the midst of one baseball game. I know, and we're only in the fifth inning. We're not even done yet here. The pitch popped up in the infield towards first base. The pitcher Eads will take it himself, and that will retire the side, but Greenfield gets a run to draw just a little bit closer. They got two. They got two, correct? Yes. Took it from 11-8 to 11-10. Frontier, that is our score on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. Well, Jeff, this is unbelievable. We're sitting here in the top of the sixth inning and the leadoff batter for Frontier is on his fifth ride. <laughs> Alex Gachinski. First pitch to him, first ball swinging down the shortstop. Love there by Thomas. Low throw gets away. Runner will move up to second. Now they're going to throw down there, and the ball gets away there. Wow. But Gachinski wisely darts right back into second base. And there goes another one of our situations, Jeff, where the leadoff hitter in an inning is on. We've so, seen it. Yeah, here's, here's the thing. Here's a couple of statistics for you. So we've had 10 ups between the two teams. No, now we've had 11, counting this. We've, uh, out of the 10 so far, the team has scored in nine out of the 10 ups that they've had. Wow. Okay, turns that back. Yep. Nine out of the 10. Um, Frontier did not score in the third. That was it. That was Each it. Each team has scored in every other inning. And uh, now 10 out of the 11 ups tonight, the leadoff guy has reached. Yeah. Here's the set by Doobie. First pitch curveball. That is a strike. It is 0-1 to Fasulo. And now he's up for his fifth. Well, now that was the top of the order. So now everybody for Frontier up for their fifth time. Yep. 11-10 <clears throat> Red Hawks. Set by Doobie. Delivers to the plate. Spun him back. Nearly got him. Count is 1-1. And once again, we want to let you know when these two teams met earlier this year, final score, one nothing Frontier. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you never know what you're going to see. I guess. Here's the pitch. That's in the dirt. And the count goes to 2-1. Well, I can remember seeing a doubleheader at Fenway when I was a kid, when we were kids, Bobby. 1977, Red Sox against the Brewers, which was a team I loved as well back then. It was a single admission doubleheader. You have to watch two games back to back. And uh, Doobie will step out. Game one, Red Sox beat the Brewers 14 to 10. The teams combined for a then American League record for home runs. It was a, a crazy game like, like this one, right? Yeah. Here's the pitch to the plate. That is high. Count goes to three and one. Game two, a 6 nothing shutout that lasted about two hours. Oh, wow. What a difference. Two completely different games yep. in, in, in one day. 
Hey Jeff, look out to right field. Are you seeing a reflection off someone's shades that is reflecting off the lights? Oh, I do. Uh, off of the right fielder? That's I just wanted to make sure it wasn't me. No, well, I'm seeing it too. When he moves his head in a certain yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, see? The reflection of the... Of the shades that, that he should be taking off his hat. Well, maybe, it, maybe he's wearing them on top of his hat at this point. Yeah, that's what I think he is going, yes. All right, so the runner goes down the first on the walk. Remember I talked about a school book looking like a botched calculus exam? I don't know on my you, you ought to see mine. <laughs> Grayson Luce walked and scored his last time up. Had a two-run single before that. 11-10 Frontier, top six. Pitches up and away. One and a first and second. My, uh, honestly, my score book looks like the, um, the way that the fillings were with my teeth uh, when I was a kid. They're all dark in there. Yeah, I used to be bad. Here's the pitch, a curveball, got the corner. Nice pitch there to the lefty by Devin Doobie. One and one the count. Frontier leads by one. Top of the sixth inning of the seven inning game. Doobie looks towards second. Shortstop Thomas ducking in. Now pitch to the plate, that will back to the screen. And the count now goes to two and two. Game is now two and a half hours long here, folks, and we're only in the top of the sixth. It is, yes, 833. So yeah, we're hang and tight and with us here. Two and a half hours long. If you're tuning in to listen to Nights with Elena, we, we will get to her. I'm confident we will get to her at some point. <laughs> the pitch foul back right at us. I flinched. <laughs> it's coming right from my noggin. And uh, we got to remember here, this is one of those games with the way the score is, this could even go longer than seven. It's a one run game at this point. Now we'll back to the screen. We'll do it again, two and two. Wow. On deck is Tyler Cusson, who's been a big part of everything. He's had a couple of RBI singles, has scored two runs. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out. Runner on first and second to pitch. Ground ball down the first. Moore will take it to the bag himself. Runners will move up to second and third. So that goes into the book three unassisted. And here comes Cusson, who again, his last two at bats has uh, done some damage. As a longtime first baseman, that was a great job there by Malik Moore. Put his hands up in the air, walked to the bag, ran it right in, kept the runner safe. Good move right there, but here's a big spot for Cusson. First pitch to him is high for a ball with a curveball, 1-0. Frontier 11, Greenfield 10, top six of this seven inning game. But this were a... Major League game, consider it to be the top of the eight. So it's late. Pitch. That is low, 2-0 oh the count. Still only got the one out here in the top of the six with runners on second and third. And now we have a stoppage of play. Oh, you know what? That's not B.J. Guerin that uh, I had him behind the play. What did they? What did they call catcher interference? They must have called catcher yeah. interference. And yeah, he's talking to Pierce right now. That puts yep. Cusson on wow. below the bases. We have seen the body. <laughs> this has been unbelievable. <laughs> oh my gosh, we have seen everything. Wow. And here comes Brian with the bases loaded and one out. The pitch in the dirt. Pierce stops it. <laughs> Who would have thought that we'd be adding in a catcher's interference to what we've seen tonight? Doobie in a jam. One and all the count. One out. Bases juice. Next pitch. That is outside. Two and oh. Nowhere to put him. That's it. He's already walked twice here tonight. Tell you right now, this could be a one that could be just like the inning he had in the fourth where he was able to walk in a run. Could Ethan Bryant get another RBI with a walk? 
And he might. That pitch is high. It's 3 and 0 oh now. Wow. Well set by Doobie, the 3 0 pitch. Yeah! Just the corner outside with a curve, 3 and 1. That was a good take right there. I definitely I need to even take another. Yeah, I think I would take a, a second strike here. Yeah, I would do it. Only up one. The pitch swung on, foul down the left field line over the third base dugout, which is the Greenfield dugout. Now the count has gone full, three and two. If he can get the K here, that'll be huge. Greenfield does not have the infield down all the way around. They're in, in the corners, double play depth in the middle. Payoff pitch. Ball four. It's 12-10 Red Hawks. Wow. Locked in a run. And that is an RBI. You know, you know, how much longer can you keep Doobie in is the big question. I know exactly and I figured out exactly why Skinny ended up doing what he did, bringing back the pitcher that was originally the starting pitcher for his team is they got to save their starter against Pioneer on Monday night, Jeff. Tom Susanik's coming to the mound. We believe we'll see a pitching change, so we will step aside for the break. Our score, Greenfield Savings being scoreboard, Frontier 12, Greenfield 10, Bear Country, 5.3. Okay, bud, just keep going. They are going to make a pitching change here. We're going to get everything sorted out here. Definitely Smith, Kelher, and AGH. And then we'll uh, Somebody's start. coming in out of the dugout. It's LaFleur. Oh, they're going to pitch Preston. He, he threw against Turners and struggled, remember? Yep. Struggled with his control. Couldn't, yeah. couldn't find the strike zone. Right. Oh my God, Jeff, we've seen everything tonight. Whew. Okay, bud, play Jendon here. Play Jendon. It's on the floor. Oh, Preston. Yep. They brought Doobie back out to center. So yep. they, I think they brought Doobie back out to center. Yeah, because Thomas is still at short. Yeah, because I see Thomas still at short. Yeah. Yep. So. Hmm. Preston Lafleur is the new Greenfield pitcher. Frontier leading by two now after that bases loaded walk which scored Gachinski. Gachinski has scored four runs tonight. <laughs> he has. He had a great night. He has scored four out of the 12 runs. He has scored a third of the Red Hawks runs. This has been... Uh, it's been an unbelievable game. It really has. I mean, I'm sitting here and I'm looking at my scorebook, Jeff, and I got to tell you, if... If you look at my scorebook, I don't think you'd even know what that even does. I mean, it's crazy. Tonight. I see a lot of diamonds that are colored. Yeah. Here. So for yeah. those of you that were following along, those of you scoring at home or wondering about how do you score at home, if you fill in that diamond, that means the run scored. And Bobby has a lot of dots, and I have a lot of dots. I, well, <laughs> I, I do it a little different because I'm the play-by-play -play guy. On a play where something happens that scores, I circle it. So I have a lot of circles. You have a lot, a lot of circles, of, and I have, have the lot, diamonds. You have a yeah. lot of diamonds. Yep. Yeah. And this guy right here has had a great night at the plate. And yep. Skubisky Bannock, he has been on three out of the four times. Yep, three hits. He had a two-run single, and he singled and scored early in the uh, second inning. One out. Bases loaded. Crust in the floor. Deals plateward. First pitch is up and in for a ball, 1-0. and oh. If he needs an out to hopefully prevent this one from getting away from the wave. And there's only one out here in the sixth inning 
with no place for Bannock. Inside Ooh. hit him. Hit him. Wow. Look him. He had no chance to get away from it. And he'll go down to first base. It is 13 to 10. So the Hawks go up by a field goal. Yep. Wow. And you you know, who would have thought that you would go from one run to a football score? Wow. Two runs in the inning, taking it from 11 10 to 13 to 10. And here is Eats. Struck out his last time up. But had an RBI single the time up before that. He's now back on the mound. That pitches in the dirt for a ball. Pierce keeps it in front of him to keep that 14th run from scoring. We're playing the top of the sixth inning here, folks. And we've had 23 runs combined. Here's the pitch. Ooh, he's got a full strike here. That was high for a ball. That LaFleur needs to needs to find the zone. We saw him pitch at Turner's Falls. That was other, that was another kind of crazy ball. Not as crazy as this. He feel let a late lead get away before pulling away in extra innings and winning it. Next pitch, ground ball right back to LaFleur. He's gonna come to the plate. They get the put out there and throw to first. And Moore never made it back to the bag, but Malik did stop it. So that is the second out of the inning. Bases will remain loaded. 13 to 10 Frontier, our score. And here comes Ferreira. Now, if you, <clears throat> here's, here's something I want to bring up. If you were talking and you already talked to your pitcher and everybody was communicating, you would have known that if the ball was going to be hit to the pitcher, he's going to throw it home. And that first baseman should have been at the bag right. waiting for that throw. Could have been a one, two, three. Absolutely. Inning ending double. Yeah, play. He missed it. Did not happen. First pitch is high. Four ball, it's one and oh. Frontier 13. Greenfield 10, two outs. Bases loaded here in the top half of the sixth inning. Here's the pitch. Ball roll back to the screen. That'll even it up one and one. Yep. If uh, Herrera can keep it going here, we will see. He's had a good night. He had that sacrifice that was able to score a run, and then he had two base hits. Only went down one by striking out here today. Yep. The one one pitch. Swung on and this. Great two. Nice pitch there by LaFleur. Uh, Number 19 looking a little bit better here now for the wave. Got to get out of this. And Preston LaFleur get out of it here. Keep it a three run game. The wind up. The 1 1. That is outside. Two and one the count. And this is a big game for both teams here. Got him down for two and two here. Here's the pitch. Fouled away up towards the light standard near the frontier dugout. We'll do it again, two and two. Deuces wild here, Bobby. Sure is. Two and two with two outs. One more ball, and then the runners will be in motion. The floor digging around the rubber. And he's back on there. Going set to deal. Here is the windup and the pitch. Fouled the way. We'll do it again. It's quite a battle here. Yep. <clears throat> Nowhere to go. It's a big, big spot right here for Frontier to be able to try to open this up here in the sixth. Preston Lafleur needs that strike. Now is a timeout at the plate. And Ferrara will step out. He'll get right back in there, though. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Bases loaded. Top six. Frontier looking to add on to a three-run lead. Here it is. Ground ball back to the mound. Knocked down by LaFleur from his knees. Throws wild at first. One run scores. A collision at first. Two runs have scored. It's 15 to 10. I wonder if they're going to call an interference on the first baseman and give Fiera a second base. 
the base umpire coming over is a BJ Guerin and he hasn't indicated an out at this point. No, he's he's gonna think stay he's on seeing, first base. I think he's seeing if he's okay. Yeah. Cause he got he he got popped. Yeah, it was a big collision. It was a big collision at first Moore. base. And that was an error by the uh Pitcher, by the pitcher. Pitcher LaFleur. So yep. E1 results in uh, two, two runs, runs scoring. Yep. As Cussin scored and Brian scored. Runners on first and third. It is 15 to 10. The Red Hawks. And here is Pareto. And he takes the ball. 1 0. Pareto began the game in right field, never batted until now. He re entered. Last inning, right-handed batter. Gabriel was hitting in this spot. Red Hawks have what ordinarily I would say would be an insurmountable. Yeah, you there. can't say that tonight. But the way this game is going, you never know. One and one is our count with two outs. Baker was nearly out of it. Here's the pitch that is high, two and one. So it's been a four-run inning. Frontier has also had a five-run inning. Here's the windup and the pitch. Fouled back and the count now even at two and two. And as Bobby C and I have mentioned repeatedly tonight, first matchup of the season between the teams, one nothing. Frontier was the. <laughs> How about a 24 run difference so far? The pitch fouled back right on the right. And we'll do it again, two and two. Knights with Elena is not gonna come on till well after nine o'clock tonight. We're uh, working on a three hour game here. Well, thank God you don't have far to go home after this, Jeff. That's true. <laughs> That's a big pitch here for LaFleur. The 2-2, two, two, it's in the dirt. Oh, man. Found his full 3-2. Now, he does have a place to put him. Right, he does have a place to put him, but, you just but there's a but, though. Alex Kuczynski's on deck, but. Yeah. Yeah, he's been hot. <clears throat> he has been big trouble. Here's the payoff pitch. Foul. Wow. At the screen. Pierce couldn't quite keep it. Would have been straight through right there. Frontier by five. 15 to 10, they have scored four here in the sixth. This is their ninth batter of the inning. So they've gone through the whole order so far. Here's the pitch. Foul the get at the plate, he's still alive. Yeah. Good work, good work. The floor is like, how do I get this guy out? <laughs> well, interesting story. Remember, remember Brett Saberhagen? Sure. Brett Saberhagen, there were times he would get frustrated when uh, in a bat like this, and he would just plunk the guy. Would he? And work on the next guy, because he was wasting too many pitches. Ah. Didn't happen all the time, but he would do that occasionally. Swung on a nice strike three, finally puts him away. But Frontier sends nine men to the plate. They score four runs. They lead Greenfield 15 to 10 on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard as we head to the last half of the sixth inning. Here is the set and the pitch in there for a strike. One ball, two strikes to Fitzpatrick. And now he's got to really guard that plate. Anything close, he's got to be happy here. He feel needs base runners. The pitch that is high. And on the count now even at two and two. After the game, Knights with Elena. Then tomorrow morning, Bear swaps with Jennifer 8 to 10. And then next team by Checker Fry will be from 10 to 11. And uh, that's Franklin County's largest tag sale tonight. Here's the 2-2 pitch. It's low in the dirt, and he's worked the count full. 
I have not counted up how many full counts we've had, but we've had a ton of that bats that have gone to full eight. And on many of those occasions, we've seen multiple foul balls on three and two. Here we go. The three-two pitch. Up and in, nearly pumping in the helmet. Fitzpatrick walks to lead off the sixth inning for Greenfield. And here comes LaFleur, Preston LaFleur. He'll bat in Rodriguez's spot. This is his first at bat as he came in to pitch in the top half of the sixth inning. Preston LaFleur, right-handed batter, wears number 19, a decent-sized young man. He can give it a ride if he can make the connection. Set by Eads, the pitch. That's a ball. No, it's in there for a strike, I should say, Owen one Sorry about that. It's 0 and one Here's the pitch. Popped up right along the first baseline. Foul territory making the catch there is Cusson. And there's the first out of the inning. Top of the order, Devin Doobie coming up. Singled and scored. Singled and scored again. Walked and scored his last time up. Frontier 15, Greenfield 10, bottom of the sixth. On run first with one out, here is the pitch to Doobie. And takes a ball, throw down to first base. Back in there, safely, is Fitzpatrick. Here is the set. And the pitch. That is high for a ball. Let's go, Devin! Two balls and no strikes is our king. Do be back in there in the box. Right hander deals towards the plate. That is inside. Oh, we have a 2 1 count. Two balls, one strike. That first pitch of only was a, a late call for a strike. So two and one. Eves turns and fires at the door. Now the count goes to three and one. This is working out pretty good for Greenfield. They are looking to get as many base runners as they can. Put some pressure on the Red Hawks and the last two outs. They are down to their last five outs. Here is the pitch. Ball four. That is the second walk of the inning. And now the Green Wave has something going. Two on with one out. Here comes Jackson Campbell. Will Greenfield be aggressive on the base pass here? I mean, they're down by five, so you would think not. Here's the pitch by Eads. And that is ball one. So Eads has now lost his control at this point. And Greenfield trying to make him pay. Here's the pitch. That is high. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Two on with one out. The 2-0 to Campbell. That's in there for a strike. Two balls and one strike. Nice pitch there by Eads. Frontier 15, Greenfield 10. Eads looks at the runner at second. And looks back towards the plate. Rocks and fires. Swung on a miss. That was, no, it was a... Oh, he missed it, but it got away from the catcher, so the runners will move up. I thought maybe he fouled it off, but he never made contact. So that was a, a wild pitch or a pass ball. Either way, it goes to the backstop. The runners move up to second and third for Campbell. Two and two the count. 
There's one out. Greenway trailing by five. Set by Eads, looks towards the plate, pitches. That is outside, gets away, but not far enough for the runner to score. That's Fitzpatrick on third, and Doobie's out at second. So, yeah, Arthur had no choice but to hold on third. He absolutely do not want to run into an out, trailing by five late innings. And Campbell up there, but the bases, uh, they get three two count, second and third. Here is the set by Eads, and the pitch. Popped up, shallow left field, and it is going to be caught by the left fielder, Fitzpatrick Bluffs running home. He'll hold there, two outs in the inning. That's a big out there for Eads. And here comes John Marhefka. Reached on an error and scored. Fielder's choice RBI, and he has singled his last two times up. A single here would get Greenfield uh, probably back to within three runs. Frontier 15, Greenfield 10, bottom six. And timeout called at the plate. Michael Pierce is on deck. There's two outs in the inning. Greenfield will love to get a hit here or even a walk and bring him to the plate. He struck out his last time up. He would like to atone for that. Here's the pitch to Marhefka. In there for a strike, it's 0-1. Greenfield down to their last four outs. Just after nine o'clock, the game now over three hours old. Working the uh, night shift here for you folks. The pitch, there's a long drive down the left field line. That is a fair ball. It is going to score two runs. Mar Hefka with a two-run double. It is now 15 to 12. And he was right on that one. Scores Fitzpatrick. Scores Doobie. Mar Hefka at second base for Michael Pierce. Mike had an RBI single and scored in the first. Reached on an air, oh, I'm sorry, it uh, was robbed of a great catch. His next time up. First ball swinging, there's a line drive, base hit. In the center field, they're going to send the runner home. He will score without a throw. Marhefka is in. It is 15 to 13. Michael Pierce. With the RBI single, he's knocked down two tonight. And here comes Campbell Thomas. The game just, this is just punch, counterpunch, punch, counterpunch. We have a meeting on the mound. While they do that, we will take a timeout. We'll come back with more high school baseball as it continues live here on Bear Country 95.3. They are going to stick. With Eads on the mound, it is 15-13. Caleb Thomas up with Pierce on first. He's running. Pitches in there for a strike. Throw to second. He is in safely. And Pierce can run for a big guy. So the time runs at the plate. A two-run double by Marhefka with two outs. And an RBI single by Pierce. And now he's in scoring position. As Greenfield is uh, not going to lay down. Pitch to Thomas. There's a back, takes it outside. It's one and one. So to recap, Fitzpatrick walked and scored. LaFleur popped out to first base. Pitch up again here in a second. Next pitch, that's in the dirt. Nice stop there by the catcher, but Pierce will run to third. And the wide throw is knocked down. So after LaFleur batting in the number nine hole popped out to first base, Doobie walked and scored. Campbell flew out to left, shallow left. Two run double by Marhefka. RBI single by Pierce, you're up to date. Caleb Thomas up with a two run count. Pierce 90 feet away with the 14th run. Here's the set, here's the pitch. 
in there for a straight. Two and two. Green four down to the last four outs, but much more doable than when we began the inning. Scored three so far. Here's the pitch. Pop foul on the first. This first thing. Hudson's going to take a look, but really no chance. We'll do it again at two and two. You know, if you really think about this game, Jeff, and you add in everything that's happened, and even throw in the fact that we had a catcher's interference and a re-entry of a pitcher, it's been quite the night. It really has. <laughs> it really has. Pierce on third. He's looking to score. Here it is. There's a ground ball down to second base. It eats up the second baseman. That's going to be an error. Thomas reaches. Here scores, it is 15 to 14. Wow. Here we go. Let's go, boys, come on. Let's go. And Malik Moore will come up, seventh batter of the inning. Now, there was a World Series game in 1993 that finished with this exact same final score. The Blue Jays and Phillies, Jays won it 15 to 14. Wow. There's a check swing, a roller along third baseline. It stays foul. It's only one to more. He would have been safe. Oh, easily. Yeah. Greenfield with the tying run on first, and believe it or not, the go-ahead right to play. They came into this half inning trailing 15 to 10. They have scored four times to get back to within one. I have no idea what the final is going to be here tonight. <laughs> I don't think, I think everybody sitting at home is saying the same thing. Runner goes, pitches inside for a ball, diving in. The second base. Here's uh, Caleb Thomas, and now he's on second base. Now a single possibly could score and tie this game. We'll see. Pitch to Moore. There's a line drive in the center field. That's a base hit. Thomas is being waved in. Now they're going to hold him up. And the throw. Yeah, he was. What a gun. He was what a gun. By the center fielder, Fasulo. That was Thomas nice. This would have been dead to rights. And is he okay? He had to put the brakes on and head back in the third, he's okay. First and third, Greenfield has the time run, 90 feet away, the go-ahead run is on first base here in the last of the sixth inning. And you know, you start wondering Christiana. You start wondering now if there's gonna be some strategies from some of your coaches on whether you should put in pinch hitters if things aren't going well for some of your regulars. At the moment right now, Lucas Siano is 0 for 4 on the night. Checks Wayne, and it's in there for a call it's strike. It's 0 and 1. He has struck out. He struck out twice, actually. Yeah, got to send Malik Moore here. Moore is going to go, and the oh. goes into center field. Thomas scores. Oh, oh my God. Probably we are tied at 15. Wow, I have seen everything tonight. Oh my goodness, have I seen it all. Greenfield has scored five in the sixth to tie the game at 15. A throwing error from the pitcher, throwing it to second base with a runner on third, goes out in the outfield. And now Cyano takes the ball and they're going to play it. You know, Cyano, depending on where it goes, I mean, if he... If he gets a base hit here or could score the run, they get one, two, three, and they can win this game. Particularly the right field. He uh, could take the lead. Here is the pitch. Swung on a miss. And I can hear the... I can hear uh, the Greenfield bench below. Head on the ball. Yep. Right on the ball. Right? The is pulling this up. Easy to do. There's the windup. And the two strike pitch that's in the dirt. Runner will move to third. Pass ball could be a very costly thing here for Frontier if there's a pass ball. This is why it is so important for the catcher to try to stop everything. 
And Malik Moore is on third with these potential go-ahead run. The one-two. Powell at the plate will do it again, one and two. Oh, boy, if, just think if Caden James was able to hold that one, they would have got out of this one. This babies, we talked about this, and we were only sort of kidding, I think, at the beginning, that this game could go more than seven innings. You don't know, Jeff. We might see that. Wow. There's the pitch. Salo down the line on the right. Do it again, one and two. Well, Lucas Siano could come up to be the guy that could be the big one here with a hit. Luciano stepping back in. Here's the pass. Oh. Waved at it. Strike three. That will retire the side. But Greenfield sends nine to the plate. They score five runs. And we are right back where we started. Time. 15 to 15 at the end of six on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. Again, as we've mentioned, there's only been one half inning where there was no scoring. That was the Frontier third. And ironically, they had loaded the bases with nobody out, and Greenfield was able to pitch out of it, Caleb Thomas. But each team has scored in every frame but that one. Yep. Is this a time now where we get another zero up there? Clean yeah. inning? Oh. We'll floor out for his uh, first full inning of work. And he's got a deal with Alec, Alex Kuczynski, who has been a tear. Yeah. He has scored four runs tonight. Right? Unbelievable. Right? He's yeah, he scored four right. runs. And he has put in a night. And he's been on every time but one. That is the windup and the pitch that is in the dirt roll. Ball one. We will have a very brief post game show. The other stat that Bobby C and I have noted is all those leadoff guys who have reached. There's a drive into right center field. And it's put away out there by the right fielder. So I for the, I think, Bobby, for the first time tonight, it the field has retired the leadoff man. Yes, it is. Which brings us back to if Greenfield had been able to push that final run across, they could be looking to get the victory right here. But that's not the case. So F9. And we're talking about how we score games. F9 is what I put. Yeah. Grace Fasula walked and scored his last time up. Went to your center fielder. First pitch by LaFleur in the dirt. One and all. We are tied at 15. Frontier scored one in the first, three in the second, five in the fourth, two in the fifth, four more in the sixth. That's their 15. I'll get you Greenfield. 15 here in the second. There is the pitch, ground ball through the middle and into center field. They just got past the pitcher, LaFleur. He nearly gloved it, Bobby. He could have had that, though, honestly. He just didn't bend over enough to get it. But if he bent down a little farther, he would have had the easy play at first. But now, could that speed of Nick Fasulo come to Hunt Greenfield here in the seventh inning. Yeah, you gotta send him. You gotta send him. The tie game now, yeah. 15-15. I told you I'd get to Greenfield's line so I'll do that in the second year, but first things first. Check on the runner at first. The batter is Grayson Loose. He also has knocked in two runs and scored two runs. Well, knowing that you got Loose, Cussin and Bryant coming up. You want to get that runner to second base, Jeff. Runner goes. Pierce throws through. And into second base, he caught the bag. He's quick. That kid can run. Nice hustle right there by Fasulo. Well, there you go, Jeff. That's what I was saying. You got that one out, but you got loose Cussin and Bryant coming up. And you can't forget about Skabiski Bannock either. We got some good hitters. All right, scoring position with one out in a 15-15 tie. The floor 
Looks at it to sign Preston. With a high set, turns and fires. First pitch up and away. And now they'll be second pitch up and away after that Sterling base. Two and over count in the first feeling of chill air coming into the booth here at that school. It was a beautifully warm day. And it is the set. And they turn the fire towards second base and ends up in center field. But See? Yeah. Center field Doobie backing it up. Now, how many times has that happened tonight? Probably at least four or five. Yeah. That would have thrown to second base or even at first base. And there was a throw that was at the plate that ended up plating two. A lot of throwing the ball around tonight. Something that coaches are always teaching the young kids not to do. It's surely happening this evening. Set by LaFleur, the 2-0 pitch. Way high, is a, it's a wild pitch. Goes back to the screen. LaFleur's gonna cover the plate, he does. Pierce throws it back. Basula moves up to third and now with one out, he is 90 feet away. With the potential go ahead run. Folks, we are tied 15 15, if you can believe that. Can I give you a strategy? Take a strike if you get the strike, okay? Take it. Or, or, how about a drag bunt on a lefty yeah, right now on a squeeze? I, what what do you think of that one, Jeff? I, I like the latter. Yeah, it's one of those two. I would do it. Yep. Greenfield has pinched the infield in. Please. Seal off this run. Yeah, see? And there is no... Oh, they're just starting to see it now. Here comes the pitch. It's high. Ball four. First and third with one out. And you know Luce. He's got the speed. He's going to second. No question. He'll be off quicker than quick. Potentially even on the first pitch. Yeah. Now Cussin... He ended up getting on on an error, then he ended up flying out to the second baseman, and then he got a couple base hits, and then the catcher interference, interference. of all things, in the sixth. First and third, one out, top seven, 15 off. Pitch to Cussing, in there for a strike, it's 0-1. So the floor gets ahead. Surprised they're not sending loose. No reason for him to be sitting there at first. It breaks, it breaks up the opportunity of him to stay and not have to do a force out. There he goes. Pierce will eat it, going and standing. And I guess a steal or a defensive indifference. But now the runners are on second and third with one out. Yeah, and the runners do not have to go anywhere. They would have to make that play to first for Cussin if it's hit in the infield. On deck is Bryant. Second and third with one out. The pitch. Oh. Inside. <laughs> Three and one. Hey, ki kids are getting into it at this hour in here. They yeah. Are. Old folks, we're just barely, yeah, yeah, we're barely hanging. We're barely hanging on. <laughs> Tank almost on E at this point. I mean, uh, in the red body. Yeah. All right, here is the set and the pitch. Did it hit him? Oh! And plunked him. And the bases are loaded. Cussin wanted some RBIs here. Yeah, oh, he threw, yeah, he threw, he threw his bat, bat down. down he threw his batting gloves down. Yeah, because he wanted to hit. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't well, that it hurt. It's a tie game. That's why. He wanted to get them. He wanted some ribs. The bases loaded now. For Ethan Bryant. One out for Bryant. In a 15-15 tie. It's been a war of attrition here. And here comes Tom Sushnick. And it looks like there is going to be a pitching change here, so we will take the break. We'll be back to Vets Field right after these. This is Bear Country, Daddy, Five Card Grade. Okay, they've gone to Arthur Fitzpatrick, the second baseman, who's going to uh, tow the rubber here in a huge situation here. You know, no pressure. Base is loaded, one out, and a 15 50 tie, top seven. And here comes Bryant. He no I have not seen Arthur pitch. Me either. Not since Little League. Bryant steps in on the right side. Bases loaded. One out. 15 all the pitch. In there for a strike. Only one. He's off to a good start. We, we still do have that one out, so. 
Very important to make sure you make the plays at any bag or even at the plate. Plate's most important right now. Close to the curve, it stays high, and the count now even at one and one. This game is nearly three and a half hours It is. Old. It is unreal. Here's the next pitch to buy that's high, two and one. the windup and the pitch driven foul down the line and left that was fouled by a lot he was way out ahead on that one and the count now even at two and two on deck is Skrubisky Bannock it's Patrick working out of the windup with the bases loaded curveball stays high it's three and two a walk and Frontier will reclaim the lead. It's a big pitch. Big pitch in this game. The payoff pitch, fastball, down to second base. They go to second for one on the first. Double play, bottom! Wow! And Greenfield gets out of it. Arthur Fitzpatrick gets the double play grounder. Wow! We go to the last of the seventh inning, and on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard, we're tied at 15. Oh, wow! All right, Greenfield now coming to bat in the last half of the seventh inning in a game now that is three and a half hours long. 15-15 tie. Frontier with a golden opportunity to reclaim the lead after Greenfield score five to tie the game at 15 in the sixth. The Frontier hit into a inning ending double play. Four to six to three. And what do we got? We have a little bit of a delay here. What is happening in front of the Frontier? They're getting everybody kind of situated. No, they are making a... Well, okay, that was interesting. Yeah, he gave warm-ups and then... The Eads was warming up, and then they made the change, and they're going to another reliever. Yeah. So we'll take it as he takes his warm-ups. We'll take a timeout, and we'll reset the scene when we come back to the game that just won't end. Heffernan, Aiden <laughs> Heffernan, is going to try to keep... Frontier alive. Greenfield just needs one to win it. We're back after these. So it is Aiden Heffernan now who will uh, toe the rubber. He's going through his warm-ups. 15 to 15 is our score. We're only three and a half hours in on a high school boys bat baseball game, Jeff. <laughs> Usually they go too. Yeah. Oh, we're almost on a we're almost on a double double duty here tonight. Wow, this has been quite a game. If, I mean, if you want memories, I'm gonna have to save these two pages. <laughs> Going up against Fitzpatrick, who uh, got out of that jam, induced the uh, inning ending double play, takes a, a ball inside. Greenfield just needs one to end this game. Got to tell you, though, that was a beautiful. They turned that double play beautifully, by the way, Greenfield. And pitch is in there for a strike. It's one and one. It is Fitzpatrick. And let's see who's going to be the on deck here because we've had several switches. Pitch is up over his head for a ball. Looks like we're back to Rodriguez, back in his own spot. LaFleur batted in that spot last time. Right. And then back to Doobie at the top of the order. Again, Greenfield needs just the one. Two balls, one strike. Heffernan. And it was delivery, the pitch. Ground ball right back to the mound. Nice place by Aiden. And goes two thirds of the way to first. A toss over there. And one up, one down here in the seventh. Now Frontier gets out of this inning. We are going to extras. Looks like five field goals for each team here. 
here in the seventh. Rice and beans! Rice and beans! Ronaldo! Ronaldo! Rice and beans! Ronaldo Rodriguez. Right fielder. In on the right side. Number nine batter. Doobie is on deck. First pitch to him. is low. And Hefferman, you know, goes, he's got some heat. He's got some heat. He has, a, he has a very controlled delivery. He looks like he's been working at his craft for a while. And if you watch, when, when he goes, he, he bends way low. Way low when he bends. Next pitch. In there for a strike. One and one. No, he has a very fluid delivery. Yeah. I, I, I like what I'm seeing so far. One ball, one strike, one out. Tied at 15 and the seven. The pitch. Did it hit him? It hit him. Oh, wow, another hit by pitch. Blunk him, and the wow. winning run is on first base for Devin Doody. Top of the order. It's like a sixth at bat here in seven innings for Doobie. <laughs> a lot of guys have been up to plate. Oh, yeah. They get to work on their batting here tonight, for sure, in this one. The Fernando will now work out of the stretch. Winning run on first with one out. Nice lead there by Rodriguez. He's not running. There's the bunt right in front of the plate. Picked up. They'll throw down to first base. They get the out there. Rodriguez to second base. And now with two outs, the winning run is right there for Jackson Campbell. Jackson Campbell could be the big hero here with a base hit. Jackson Campbell will step in on the right side. Flew out to left field, shallow left to his last at bat. Two outs, runner on second. Heffernan looks towards second, sets, turns, and fires. In there for a strike, it's 0 and 1. If Greenfield does not score here, on to extra innings we go. This could be a big spot here for Greenfield to be able to pull off this win. Here's the pitch. Fowler back to the screen, and he's in an 0-2 hole. Okay, what do Hefferman and James do here? Do they just attack Campbell, or do they waste one and try to get him to fish? I think the latter is probably what they're going to try to do. Have him try to fish because he knows he has two strikes on him with the runner in scoring position. Now we're gonna go on top here. Heffernan lets it fly. Hold strike three. Heffernan wow. gets the K on Campbell. And we will go to extra innings. End of seven here at Greenfield High School on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. 15, <coughs> 15 times. All right, we're back here. Extra innings between Greenfield and Frontier tied up at 15 apiece here in the eighth inning. And Arthur Fitzpatrick throws the first pitch. And he gets strike one against Liam Skubisky Bannock, who's had a great night here tonight. Been able to get on every time but once. And looking to be able to get on to get that lead runner on for Greenfield. And it looks like the umpire having a chat with Fitzpatrick. Once again, 0-1 here. And the release from Fitzpatrick is up there, it's high and inside, 1-1. One and one. Little bonus baseball here on Bear Country here tonight in the eighth. 15-15. Oh, nice curve right there. A little bit low, though. And there you go. Good spot right here to be able to have a chance to smack something by Skabisky Bannock as Fitzpatrick wants to avoid a runner at first. And that's fouled out of play. Two and two. And the pitch from Fitzpatrick. Coming in here is a slow changeup. And a little high. And that'll bring up a full count. 
So another chance for Frontier to be able to get a leadoff runner in the beginning of an inning. And that is ball four. So there you go, Jeff. Skabiski Bannock is on, and there you go. Another opportunity for Frontier to do some damage here in the top of the eight. Well, it's been a night where leadoff batters have had uh, little or no, no trouble reaching. Thank you, Bobby, for uh, pitch hitting for a batter for me. No problem. And now it's Hufford, and he bumps at a high pitch. And it goes back to the screen, and it's 0-1, right? I'm going to tell you, that's not a bad idea. Well, the, Wait, that was a runner. The runner what, what are they saying? A Bach? They called a Bach before the play was done? Does that mean that there's no pitch? Hmm. Okay. I've seen it all, man. Okay, so now... <laughs> With no one out, Frontier with a runner on second on second base. And Fitzpatrick taking a peek over to second base, but I don't think Bannock is going anywhere. Another bunt opportunity, and he takes it. Goes to Fitzpatrick, gets it over to first base for the out. And one down, but a runner on third for Frontier. Here in the eighth. <clears throat> so Fitzpatrick does pick out, does get that first out. Miles Fiera, he was able to get on on an error, had a sack fly and two base hits here tonight. Nice night for Miles. And he has a chance to be able to plate the runner at third. Fitzpatrick, and strike one for him on Fiera. So, chance for Frontier to be able to take a lead with that runner sitting at third with only one out. And a little bit of a curveball that didn't break. Stayed high by Arthur Fitzpatrick. So one and one. Oh, that's right down Broadway. Strike one there. Or two, that is. This is definitely a spot where Fitzpatrick has got to be able to have some ice in the veins here. See if he can not left frontier plate, the runner at third. And that's high. Top of the eighth inning, 15-15 Greenfield, Frontier, here on Bear Country. Oh, and a breaking ball that it didn't come through. And we got a full count. Uh, this is unbelievable. <laughs> this is, uh, we've gone full so many times tonight. We sure have. No question about that. Yeah, big spot right here for Arthur Fitzpatrick. Oh, and it's through the shortstop, Thomas. And it scores that run at third. Miles Fiera gets on. 16 to 15 frontier, but I have the idea, Bobby, that we're, <laughs> we're still not done. No, we're not. And look who's up. This kid right here has done a really nice job for his team here tonight, being able to find a way to be able to help move runners. Miles Fierro's got the speed over at first base. Wouldn't surprise me if they try to get him into scoring position. Arthur Fitzpatrick, he gets it over to first base and it's easily backed by Fiera because he's got really good speed. Looking ahead to the bottom of the eighth inning, it's going to be John Marhefka, Michael Pierce, and Caleb Thomas for Greenfield. So they have uh, a lot of the right guys coming up. And they call the Bach. They call the Bach on Fitzpatrick. So that's going to put the runner on second base now. Yep. 
Wow, that's the second Bach that has happened here. Because that's how Bannock was, a, uh, Skrubisky Bannock was able to get over to second base earlier was by a Bach. It was by a Bach, yeah. 16-15. We're in the top of the eighth inning, extra baseball. Here on Bear Country between Frontier and Greenfield. Yeah, we got Perry up there now, Bobby. He's pitching there for a strike. And the count is 0 and 1. Runner on second, one out here, and into a reading 16 to 15. Here's the pitch. Oh! Just outside. And the count now 1 and 1. Top of the order. And Alex Kuczynski is on deck. Wouldn't surprise me if you might try to take off. It's in the dirt, a nice stop there by Pierce, the catcher. Big spot right there. As, uh, coming up on 10 o'clock, we're coming up on the four hour mark. It's unbelievable tonight. The pitch, grounded down the third base side, foul, just Ooh. Down. That was closer than I think Greenfield Yeah, wanted. exactly. One more <laughs> Frontier 16, Greenfield 15, combined 31 runs. When they played earlier this year, they combined for one. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. It just, that, it just, <laughs> it's just it's unbelievable. Just, it just boggles. That, that's baseball, though. I know. That is baseball. Swung on and missed strike three, so he gets the second out of the inning. That's a big out. That's a big out. Now you got a guy who has been all over the place here tonight. He's had a single. He's hit in an error through the shortstop. He had a double. He had another error that he was able to reach on. And the last time up, he flied out to right. Talking about Alex Kuczynski, of course. And on second two out, 16-15. There's a ground ball down to third. It gets in the left field. They're going to send the runner. We're going to play at the plate. He is safe. And the ball gets away. It's now 17-15 Frontier. And down to second base goes Alex Kuczynski. Wow. And now the Hawks have, well, I was going to say an insurance run. There's no such thing of a, as insurance. No insurance in tonight. Uh, not, not, no. Ordinarily, <laughs> I, I would think, okay, probably ball game here, but not yeah. tonight. No. I think everybody forgot to pay the insurance bill tonight because uh, they're not worrying about the insurance. <laughs> All right, so now still two outs in the inning. Should and be interesting on, on uh, what they want to do here with two outs. With the, with the speed of Fasulo, you know what I mean? He's got great speed. He's at the plate. He will take a ball outside. I mean, I'd, I'd swing away. I mean, he's got a double. Got yeah. a couple singles here. He did walk. Yep. Yeah, I, let's I just, would, uh, just swing away. I, I, I would buy what you're saying. Here's the pitch to Silo. It is popped up in the infield, shallow right. And they put it away to retire the side, but Frontier scores two runs in the eighth. Greenfield now coming to bat, trailing 17 15 on the Greenfield Savings Bowl score. Let's go, boys. Let's get Hello, Jeff. Aiden Heffernan now trying to close the door. He's got a two-run lead, 17 to 15, in favor of Frontier. As this game is coming up on the four-hour mark. It reminded me of a it reminded me of a uh, song by Justin Bieber called "Never Say Never." Never say never. Okay. You're, you're, well, I'm just saying, man, it ain't over yet. You're a little more up on your beeps than I than you are. I've never really been a believer. <laughs> I don't have anything against Justin. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
John Marhefka will lead out for Greenfield. Again, Greenfield has the right guys to try to mount yet another challenge. First goal swing, and that's not the good swing that we saw earlier. No. Missed that one entirely. It's 0-1. Well, nobody can say they don't have decent hitters coming up for Greenfield because they do. Marhefka is last time up with a two-run double. There's a ground ball towards the right side. It is into right Here field. we go. And here we go again. <laughs> He is on first base with nobody out for Michael Pierce, the tying run. The winning run is in the on-deck circle. Unbelievable. Bobby, you know what? And you and I, as people who know us well know that we were, we were born on the same day, the same year, a couple hours apart. And you and I are old men in our 80s, 30 years or so from now, 20, 30 years from now. We're going to say, you know that night? <laughs> Friday night over at Friday night at Best Field. It was a six o'clock start. We got out at midnight. <laughs> uh, this is going to be remembered for a long time. Yeah. Here's the pitch. That is high for a ball. Yeah. And it was one of those typical frontier Greenfield games that have always been wild and crazy. And it happened to be a game that was a one nothing earlier in the year. And then at the end of the season, it ends up being over 30 runs scored. There's the pitch, hit in the air, towering drive to left center field. It is caught out there in left center field, and Marheska will retreat to first base. Wow. That is a big out right there. They wow. get Pierce. He tattooed that one. Yeah, but sure again, did. left field here at Vets Field is massive. Ah, nice piece right there by Michael Pierce. Unfortunately, caught by the left fielder. But it's only one out. And Caleb Thomas is up, and then you got Malik Moore, who's been pretty hot at the plate. See if Greenfield gets the runners in motion here. Uh, foul at the plate. It is 0-1. Now, was that catcher interference? It was a Bach. Another Bach. Another yeah. Bach. And wow. And send the runner in the scoring position again. That's not the big run. No, that's not the, the big run. The big the, run's right at the plate. at the plate. That's so if right. you're the pitcher, you just have to focus on this guy at the, at the dish. Gosh, we, I've never seen, like, catcher interference in box, and we've seen everything tonight. All right. Here is the set by Heffernan. The pitch to Thomas. Oh, he fouled at the plate. And it's 0-2 with one out. And here is... Two outs away from ending this one as we come up on 10 o'clock here in the Eastern time zone. Four hour game in high school baseball. Wow. I'm gonna lay out a scenario here in a little body. <laughs> Set by Heffernan, looks to second, looks to the plate, deals. Oh. Swung on and miss, the ball gets away. They'll throw down the first base. They get him there. That's the second out now, Greenfield down to their last out with a runner on third. Oh, wait a minute, what do we have here? Oh. We're bringing, they're bringing Thomas back to the plate. Was it a foul ball, foul it's tip? Foul ball, and I think what may have happened, it, did it make contact with him in the box, which meant that it was uh, a dead ball. Wow, what a night. Thank God you and I know a lot about baseball, Jeff, because we have to try to explain it to all these people out there, you know. Well, well here's the scenario. <laughs> so they're going to go and they're going to keep Thomas at the dish. They're going to keep him. I wish I could turn up our crowd like I did. I know. Here. So Thomas gets a reprieve. So now there's still just one out here. Yep. Still just one out. We feel not out down to their last count. I admit, I've already got him out as a strikeout on my book, so i got to change it if he does something good here. Now, that means the runner still got to stay at third, though, Jack. Yeah. Let's go one throw. Here is the pitch to Thomas. Check swing. It's in the dirt. He did not go. They're going to check to BJ Graham the base up. He said no. He held up. He did. He did. That was a good call. One and two. So Caleb, he, he has struggled in this at-bat. Wouldn't you know it? I would, wouldn't be surprised if he turned it around. Yeah. Go Greenfield back to it in a run. I think he's looking for some worms because he's been fishing. Here is 
the set. The one two pitch. The Ember foul down the line at third. We'll do it again one and two. Here's the scenario that I'm laying out. Earlier tonight, and this game was in the early stages. People were listening to us, and then they headed out for Friday night dinner. And they're thinking, okay, by the time we're done with dinner, the game will be over. Yep. They get back in their car, and they hear what's going on here. Yep. And they're like, what? Yep. There's the set. The one two pitch to Thomas. Oh, he finished again. Again. Yes, it's in the dirt. They're going to try to throw to first. They get him there. The runner coming to the plate. This could end it. He's safe. Wow. Marhefka scores to make it 17 to 16. But now Greenfield is down to the last out with no one on base. And it's all going to come down to Malik Moore. Can Moore keep it going? Wow. A little bit of fishing going on right there by Thomas. All right, Malik Moore. Right handed down. Bases are clean now. Heffernan can just work out of his lineup. Focus on the batter. Here's the pitch. Ooh, nearly hit him. It was inside. That would have that would have put the tying run on base and a winning run. They really need the runner on and try to be able to start advancing. They gotta find ways to get a runner on here, Jeff, and start moving him. Because right now. Greenfield's got their bottom of the order that's coming up next. The one no pitch, that missed. And if you're hurting, you just want to uh, you want to find the, find the plate here and seal the deal. From Malik Moore down, there's only two filled in squares out of the 16. Here's the 2 0 pitch. Nice pitch. That's in there for a strike, and now it goes to two and one. We feel down to the last two strikes here. 17 16 Frontier in the eighth. Here is the pitch. Swung on a miss, strike two, and now the Green Ray down to their last strike. Frontier can feel it. Looking to sweep the season series against their rivals. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch, oh, a foul oh, ball. Oh, oh, he just made contact and to boy, keep it alive. And that, Jeffrey, was in the dirt and he made contact. Not a pitch he wanted to take. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Frontier 17, Greenfield 16. Here's the pitch. Oh, Fouled at the plate, he stays alive again. That one caught the catcher, James, a little bit. And his right foot, he's kind of shaking, shaking it out there. Tough kid, too. Tough kid behind the plate. One more, hanging in there. Some of the crowd, I think, is left, but not many. All right, here we go. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Pop down the first base side. It is caught, and finally. It is over, and the Frontier Red Hawks win it. Final score on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. Frontier 17, Greenfield 16. We'll take a timeout and wrap it up next on Bear Country, buddy, 5.3. Can you film the whole thing? Yep. Where can you watch it? All right, just after 10 o'clock. <laughs> What'd you say? What'd you say? Is it, is it, is it 10 o'clock in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got the lights on. We couldn't tell. <laughs> well, Bobby, back early in this game, when Greenfield missed that extra point kick, I said, you know what? It's going to come back to haunt them. And it did. Oh, what a night. They end up losing at 1760. Folks, we're making, uh, we're making some uh, facetious comments because this was a game unlike any I have ever seen in my life. Same and here. I'm we, serious we, when I... Some that. crazy things happen. We had some great plays occur. We had some plays that weren't so great that occurred. As you mentioned, Bobby, we saw all kinds of things in terms of multiple box and catcher's interference. And Got a double play we got to see tonight. Just, uh, yeah, it's just crazy. Been crazy. But Frontier ends up scoring two runs in the top of the eighth inning. And then Greenfield came back um, and they scored the one run in the last of the eighth to... Uh, to get back to within one run, but uh, Heffernan got that final out, and Frontier wins it 17 to 16. So 
They end up sweeping the season series against their rivals, a one nothing victory. <laughs> I can't win. believe it. I mean, think about this. You know, earlier in the season, it was a one nothing game, and that's a lot of the, what Greenfield and Frontier do. They do these 8-7 or 5-4 or 3-2 or like one nothing. And then you come out tonight, and you got two guys that are dealing pretty well, and the first guy deals, goes to right field, robs one of the best players with bases loaded, makes a catch. The coach re-enters him back into pitching the game, and at the end of the day, we sit here, final score in extra innings on a very long night, 17-16 Frontier. They win by, yep, one run. They win by a run, Jeff. Wow. So, so two quick points before we say goodbye and let Dave Reno get back to what he was going to be doing hours ago. Uh, <laughs> the fact of the matter is this, though. Um, we talked about the need of a win for each of these teams. We knew one team or another was going to win. It turns out it's Frontier. But the other thing is the pitching that got burned up here tonight. The, I, it's reading this wrong. Is it good that this wild and crazy game happened on a Friday night? Because now you've got the weekend and you can bring back pitchers next week as opposed to if it's happened on, a, a, say, like a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Yeah, I think that was a smart move. And I think what happened tonight is Skinny William, what, what, what Skinny said was, listen, here's what we're going to do. I am going to re-enter that pitcher back into this game. I'm going to use a couple of these other kids because Monday I am going up against Pioneer and I want Skabisky Bannock in there. I want to use my third baseman to be able to pitch against one of the big hot guys, whether it's Hugh Sajowski or whether it's Ethan Quinn. Could be Quinn it could yeah. be Quinn. So you want to be able to at least know that you got somebody that can pitch against a very good team who's 13 and all. So when you saw a re-entry, I think it was because they were playing Pioneer on Monday. Otherwise, if they were playing someone like Smith Academy or something like that, I don't think you probably would have done that against Greenfield. Just my assessment, anyway. Crazy night. <laughs> Frontier gets the win, 17 to 16. Bobby, final score for the final time in eight innings on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. The Frontier Red Hawks, 17. The Greenfield Green Wave, 16. For Bobby C. And for Dave Reno. I'm Jeff Terrell. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and have a great weekend in Bear Country, everyone.